All righty. All right, everybody, we are live. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting of the uh, Washington County School District uh, Board of Trustees Policy Committee uh, to order. And uh, we're going to begin with, uh, this is on YouTube, uh, by the way, as, uh, as allowable by uh, Governor's Directive uh, 041. Um, and we're going to begin with a roll call, Madam Clerk. Oh, you're, right. you're on mute. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to find my mute button. Uh, President Taylor. I'm here. Vice President Caudill. Here. I am here. Trustee Calvert. Here. Trustee Church. To be delayed. Trustee Nicolette. Present. Trustee Thigpen. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Clerk. Where to go to? I know we do have uh, some uh, public comment uh, that's come in for this meeting. So, Jeannie, if you'll give us the names of those, uh, and then just going to encourage our trustees. We've seen quite a bit of public comment, more so today. Uh, a handful of them has come in today. So, just as a reminder, if you haven't had an opportunity to be uh, up to speed on those, please uh, make sure you're taking a look as we go. And then those public comments. Well, um, although we will not read the comments um, allowed during the meeting, they will be made a part of the official record for the meeting. Okay, so we received public comment from Catania Taylor, Julie DiNapoli, and Amanda Braden. Okay, thank you very much. We see uh, Trustee Church has joined us. Welcome Trustee Church, we're just starting. And uh, we'll make sure the record shows record shows that you are here. I did mention that you uh, may be delayed. All right, thank you. We just went through uh, we just went through public comment, and now we'll go on to agenda item one point zero four, action to adopt the agenda. Unless it's it's a pleasure of the board to do otherwise, I'm looking for a motion to adopt the agenda as presented before us. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we have motion by Trustee Thigpen, seconded by Vice President Calder. Discussion. All right, I assume there's no public comment on this one. Jeannie, will, uh, she, her camera will pop on when it's public comment time. Thank you, that's a great reminder. All right, all those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Uh, op opposition? All right, the motion's carried. Let the record show it is unanimous, and thank you. Again, I forgot to remind you each to uh, turn, uh, turn your microphones on when you vote. so We can make sure it's clearly, uh, it's, uh, clearly uh, denoted on the record, so thank you for doing that. All right, we'll go on to uh, agenda item, excuse me, uh, agenda item 2.01. This is approval of the minutes from the February 16th, um, our meeting of a couple of months ago, meeting of the board policy committee. Uh, looking for a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Look at Trustee Calvert. That's probably the third motion she's made since she's been on the board for two years. <laughs> Look at that. I want the record to show that Trustee Calvert made that motion. All right, I got so excited I don't remember who seconded. Who seconded? Oh. Okay, we got two. We're gonna okay, we'll take Trustee Minetto this time. So moved by uh, Trustee Calvert, seconded by Clerk Minetto. Uh discussion. All right. No genie popping on, so no public comment. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Opposition? Oh, I'm sorry, opposition. All right, the motion's carried. Again, let the record show it is unanimous. And um, then we'll go on to um uh, agenda item 2.02, .02. we're going to uh, jump right into our items for discussion. This is discussion and possible action to recommend revisions to and or forward the proposed revision of board policy 1140. This is distribution and display of information and materials to students and staff, specifically to update language and provide additional clarification to a future regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for consideration of preliminary approval. Again, this is preliminary approval. Should we approve it or make, it, make it changes and approve it, it will go forward to a regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for, uh, for a first round. Uh, before us is our sort of new uh, Chief Communications and Community Engagement Officer. She's uh, been with us uh, before, is back, and has been back for a while and has hit the ground running. So uh, Ms. Uh, Anderson, good to have you back. The floor is yours. 
Thank you, President Taylor. Again, Michelle Anderson, Chief Communications and Community Engagement Officer for the record. The changes being recommended remove unnecessary verbiage, provide some clarity and, and ensure consistency in our formatting for ease of use and understanding. Uh, the first suggested change is to remove the second second sentence in the first paragraph as, is, as it is not necessary to the purpose of the policy. Uh, the next suggested changes um, is just for consistency and format, which removes moves the definitions to the beginning of the policy. Um, following that, uh, the suggested changes help to provide further clarity by utilizing some concise language from the definition section, uh, referencing who to receive prior approval from, and outlining that the extra learning activities or opportunities need to be legitimately tied to a school's curriculum and or programming. And then lastly, uh, the last suggested change is to update the referenced administrative regulation uh, title to one that is currently in place. And so that concludes just the brief recommendations. Again, nothing has changing actually the content of the policy. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, let's open this up for uh, any discussion from the board on the proposed changes to board, which are really sort of almost more like updates, if you will, to board policy uh, 1140 as submitted by Ms. Anderson. Any comments, questions? Okay, I see you, uh, Trustee uh, uh, Thigpen. Thank you, Madam President. I just have one um, question under number four that's on governing principle governing practices sorry can you give a page uh, just so we can we can all follow you uh, sorry i'm looking at my printout there we are number four um information materials concerning district school fundraising programs um, my question here is this only applies to does this only apply to on-site fundraisers meaning you know people outside the community can raise funds for any school they want to outside of our schools with no problem right that's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Trustee Thigpen. Um, I don't see any other hands. We'll pause. Um, uh, Jeannie, is it Jeannie or Jean? Do we have any public comment? I want to say your name right. Jeannie, Jean. Okay, well, there you I'm are. I was trying to unmute. I was. Um, it's Jeannie, and there's no public comment. Okay. Thank you, Jeannie. I thought it was Jeannie, but I'm thinking, man, what if I've been saying her name wrong all this time? Okay, no, thank I, you, Jeannie. Thanks. No, no, yeah, no, I want to get your name right. So thank you. We appreciate your help. Okay, there's no no further proposed changes. And so if it is the pleasure of the board, then I will look for a motion to uh, to approve. Um, let's see, to approve uh, board, pol uh, board policy committee approves the proposed revisions. This is for board policy 1140. Should this meet approval today? then it will um, uh, move on to a full meeting of the Board of Trustees uh, for consideration. President Taylor, uh, there was an error coming out of uh, our office and go governing principles and guiding pra governing practices uh, mm -hmm. are no longer headings that we use. So I would just add that the board approve it and allow our office to clean it up for formatting purposes. Um, are, are there, so not, not, uh, no, not substantive changes. It looks like we're just it, talking about it wouldn't be. Yeah, it's just titles. So okay. all it'll do is delete this and move these paragraphs over and renumber. Well, thank you. Thank you, Council, because for what that would mean, that would make the motion that we're looking for uh, to uh, approve the proposed revisions, which would include those formatting, those additional formatting changes, and forward it on to a full meeting of the Board of Trustees. That's the motion we're looking for. Trustee Thigpen, I see your hand. Yes, thank you, Madam President. I move that the Board Policy Committee approves the proposed revisions, including the ones from legal counsel, of Board Policy 1140, distribution and display of information, uh, information materials to students and staff, and forwards the policy to a future meeting of the Board of Trustees for consideration of pre preliminary approval. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? There is a second by, I missed it. Diane. Oh, that by doc, Dr. Nicolette. Thank you, Dr. Nicolette. There's motion on the floor, moved and seconded. Um, is there any discussion? Any, didn't have much of that at all. Okay. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 All right. Any opposition? 
All right, the motion is carried. Let the record show that it too is unanimous. Thank you very much, Ms. Anderson. And welcome back to the Washoe County School District team. All right, we'll now move. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, I just was saying thank you. Okay, All right, welcome. That was an easy one for your first time back. That's good. All right, uh, we're going to go on to agenda item 2.03, discussion and possible action to recommend uh, the revisions and or, and or forward the proposed revisions of board policy. This is 1314, which is solicitation of donations, advertising, and commercial activities specifically to update language to a future regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for consideration for preliminary approval. And before us, oh, you're still here. I didn't even, I didn't even look, I didn't, I don't even look at who presents, right? Until I see this one. So you're still here. Keep going, Ms. Anderson. Again, Michelle Anderson, Chief Communications and Community Engagement Officer for the record. Uh, the changes on this board policy, 1314, um, provide some clarifying language um, and again, ensure consistency in our formatting. Uh, the first set of changes under purpose and policy clean up the language to provide some clarity. Um, the next set of changes under uh, number two, CI, recommend striking references to other policies embedded within this board policy as it should be listed under related documents. Uh, the next, um, still under number two and looking at CII, legal recommends providing some guidance. For example, outlining that a principal shall not enter into an agreement with a fundraising group that collects more than 25% of the fundraising proceeds and a fundraising group may not collect student personally identifiable information. If approved, we of course would move forward with outlining more guidance in our regulations. Um, still under number two uh, and under two, uh, legal highlights a potential issue as the school may be exerting control over a uh, PTA or PTO, and then the district would be considered liable for any other acts of the PTA, PTO when it is supposed to be a separate entity and therefore they recommend removing that. Of course, we concur with that. Uh, still under number two, under four, legal has a great reminder to ensure school sites are aware of this requirement, particularly written consent requirement. Moving forward, we will uh, ensure that is done. Uh, for I, or excuse me, for EI, legal recommends admitting it uh, to avoid any First Amendment issues. And lastly, under the implementation guidelines and associated documents, uh, we need to clean up just the titles and reference policy and regulations, since many have had a title change um, or are listed elsewhere. And so we wanna make sure that we are consistent in that. And that concludes uh, the summary of all the recommendations. Okay, that sounds good, sounds good. Any questions on those changes? Recommendations. I see. I see a couple of lights come on, and we see there's there's quite a bit of a of new typing here that cleans up some language. So, um, certainly, you throw a hand up there. I see you, Dr. Nicolette. Yes, I. I thank you. Um, I guess my question is, I I need some examples of the solicitation of donations, advertising, and commercial activities. Generally speaking, uh, the policy is very broad. And so if I could have a, a few particulars, that would help me understand it a little further. I might have to defer to somebody else on my uh, third week to see if somebody had a specific example, because of course I haven't had one uh, recently. I don't know if Superintendent McNeil is possibly available or legal to provide some assistance on that. Looks like the superintendent's gonna jump in. Yeah, can you tell me which section you're on, uh, Trustee Nicolette, Dr. Nicolette? Basically, I will tell you, it, it's kind of the policy in general, but specifically, it's under, um, I guess, the, the purpose and the policy, the governing principles, page one. What kinds of activities are we trying to manage? Specific examples of activities. I mean, I, I see the title, solic solicitation of donations, advertising and commercial activities. What are we really trying to manage? What has happened that led to this policy? I guess I'm asking for a little history. Well, I can actually need a yes. little bit of that. Um, I know when I was previously here, we would have 
uh, literally dozens of outside organizations that were coming in trying to sell a product, trying to fundraise, uh, really trying to use our schools, our classrooms, our students as a way to uh, promote their business or entity. And we are trying to make sure we limit that, as you can imagine, obviously, our, we're educational purposes and want to make sure that the, the fundraising, um, any of those donation or commercial activities are, are tied to our district, our mission and our values. Thank you. So I would say that that's probably commercial activities. Um, advertising. When I think of advertising, I think of previous discussions that we've had to, to create some revenue on putting advertising on our school buses and then also on our fields and so our fences, um, that kind of advertising. And if you could, you know, tell me how, how that is working to date. Well, I will tell you, uh, Dr. Diane, uh, uh, Nicolette, that um, as far as like the advertisements on the fences, I do believe that that's probably going to be looked at by uh, city codes. Um, and I don't know where that work is at this point in time, but I know that there were some concerns around um, having that, out, that advertising outward facing onto a street. So whether it's, you know, a, a sign or something such as that. Does that help Dr. Nicolette? It does, and so we can control that. The, 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 I guess the, the worst case, depending on who you're talking to scenario is, is we would cease all kind of advertising that way. The best case scenario is, is that it's, it's more highly managed between the school district and, and city code and then I guess coming from that, I remember that I would receive information, usually in the mail, about supporting advertising in programs for athletic events. Does this exclude that as well? I am not clear on that, uh, Trustee Nicolette, if that is- I'm not clear on it either. Okay, let me help. I didn't explain it very well, I'm sorry. So in the past, as director of the Child Care Center, I would get information from, let's just say, High School A to put an ad in their ath um, uh, um, an athletic program, let's just pretend basketball, and then um, I would say, oh, yeah, that's really a great idea. I'm going to put the child care center advertising in there and I give X amount of dollars. And then they put the advertisement in their program. Of, it's probably a booster activity. Is, is, are we trying to manage that? And let me jump in, if I, if I may, in terms of my understanding. As, as I look at, um, as I look at the, uh, the sale of advertising, um, um, it talks about, if we go down to page three, uh, D, um, um, we have subsection, looks like one, but then we have, the, then we have, uh, we have Roman numeral one, then we have numbers one, two, three, um, advertising. It talks about um, um, that it's, that it's, there are some limitations around advertising sales for school newspapers and other periodic publications. I think that falls under there, uh, 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 Dr. Nicolette. And so the, the, um, the next, if you go down to three, advertising sales for programs, right, to include, but not limited, you know, athletics, drama, probably more like what you're speaking about as well. Um, so these, uh, the, the, the guidelines around there fall into here. And then the, the, uh, the superintendent um, with the administrative regulations goes into the detail of this. So in answer to your question, those things are included in, um, in this policy. Does that answer the question? Does that help? It does. I just, I guess I just, it, this was rather overarching and I just wanted to get to some nuances. And so then at that point, um, it is an administrative, whether it's at the school site um, or whether, uh, you know, up to the superintendent, those decisions are made by administrators uh, accordingly. Right. Yeah. It, it, according, as I read this, it looks like too, if, if I may, if I may just, may just jump in on this, it looks like under D2, Roman numeral two, it's first of all, it's um, it's it's the oversight is, is at the, is at the school level, right? It talks here about the school principal um, or other side administrator, 
So they'll have whatever rules they have at that school. And then there's some overarching rules um, as a whole that the district has that the principal falls, falls within that. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Cause there's mm -hmm. a lot, we uh, as a school district because we have such a wonderful audience are asked to do a lot of different activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, we want, and we want schools. You know, I mean, these additional opportunities to put a program, put an ad in the program of an of a, a athletic team, um, program of drama, any of those opportunities, yearbook, uh, school newspapers, whatever these, any of those. I mean, those are great opportunities for students to raise money, um, for schools to raise money. And then that's when we have um, Mr. Starkey um, and his team to, uh, to audit those funds as those student activity funds are brought in from, from activities such as this. So. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, Vice President Caudill, I see your I see your hand up as well. Thank you, Dr. Nicolette. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just uh, two clarifying questions. On page three, number two, is that being removed, that section? Or is that being added? We, re we recommend removing it. It should have been probably redlined, but. Okay. And is that the same for page four E1? That is correct. Okay. Uh, legal does recommend removing that so that we are not obviously being biased uh, with one organization over another. Okay, so so in our so we're being asked to approve removing both of those. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Thank you. Thank you. That being the case, um... I see that. I see the other part. That's it's, it's just th those other two just aren't written, just aren't struck through. Those other two sections. Do I have that correct, Council? Those two sections that Vice President Caldwell mentioned. They their the recommendation is to remove them. They just don't have a strike through. In right. Them. They they should have been stricken through. That's okay. yes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. One thing I will say on this, just because it's, it's you know, we meet once a month, but as we're working through these, will you, will you talk to trustees, um, and, and, and in particular for the public as well, that may be following along, um, the color coding, you know, what's, what's, what's in blue, what's in red, what's still in black, just to make sure it's kind of a reminder, because I think um, that, that gets a little cloudy sometimes as well. Would you mind, Council? Yeah, I don't mind. Let me turn on my camera here. I'm having to no one's surprise, technical issues, I'm sure. Um, and President Taylor, I just want to reiterate on this, obviously being uh, fairly new, uh, legal uh, Sarah um, Montalvo did um, an outstanding job. These were literally some changes that she had suggested back in 2017. And so oh I will say that's probably why you were seeing some different color changes is because those recommendations were done early on. It was never brought before the board. And so we were having uh, that cleanup at this time. So uh, 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 Council Rombardo, just so you know, that's why that uh, obviously normally isn't following our typical format. Okay. Sure. That helps Thanks. as well. Thank you. So, so what the public is looking at is the different colors. We literally use Microsoft Word, which I think ninety nine percent of uh, folks are are familiar with, and then we redline it. So we have all these documents in the Word format, and we go through and we redline. And when whenever you make a change, uh, such as possibly moving language around, it'll become red. That's the initial change. Then the next person in the group who comments, so it's normally legal, would be in blue. And that's why you see the cross outs in blue. So so when this was originally written, whoever did it, I believe it was Miss Scurry, but I'm not sure, it was red. And then you see the cross outs from legal, which are blue. And then sometimes you'll see comments, I can slide down. And if it's still in black, then that's actually original language that has not been changed. And then down here, you can see that sometimes there's a discussion. Um, normally we remove these, but sometimes as you all know, as I leave notes for you to make your decision in the, in the margins. And I'll say to the board, here's why I did this. Or, I know you've seen that in the past. Here's why I did this. Are you good with it? Um, and so that's what all of this is. This is a suggestion by Sarah for, uh, looks like a language change here, which, 
I don't know if Michelle didn't want to do that or I, I'm unclear what happened here, but that's what that is. Um, so that's what we're looking at. And so as you can see, I crossed this one out during the meeting and that's why I popped the blue. So uh, we're after the fact, Sarah, you can see is all the blue. And that's, so what you'll see is if, for example, I see Mr. Starkey on here and he has a policy coming up later on. So he would most likely be the red changes and I would be the blue changes because I represent Mr. Starkey. So uh, in legal, Sarah uh, was working on this for Michelle because I was working on some other stuff. Okay, I think that helps. And part of what you may see is on 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 our copies that can, that were in our packet. What what shows in blue type uh, for council is actually shows in blue highlight for us, and that's what Vice President Caldwell was referring to in terms of this part in blue. Does that mean it shouldn't be there? Because it they, yeah, there's a little more of a strikeout um, on the on the uh, the example that we see on on our screen. So if you're like me, that's a little small for me. So I have my own copy open. I have my packet open right here so I can see it a little better. Um, it isn't struck out, but I assumed it was the same as strike out because it just looks the same. So this way, um, for those in the public that may be following along, if you put it up in board docs, you'll see it, still see it in blue. It just won't have the line through it, but it has the same meaning. So that way we can catch everybody in this. All right, thank you, council. Uh, and thank you, Ms. Anderson. Anything else from the board before I check to see if there's any public comment on this? Okay, nothing else, and thank you, Vice President Caudill. Um, any, uh, um, uh, Jeannie, any uh, public comment on this? No, there's no public comment. Okay, thank you very much. So you'll see we, we, there, there was just some, uh, some clarification on here, but no changes as submitted. So if it is the pleasure of the board, um, looking, for, um, um, looking for a motion regarding this policy, board policy 1314. Diane. I move that the board policy committee approves the proposed revisions of board policy 1314, solicitation of donations, advertising and commercial activities and forwards the policy to a future board meeting of the board of trustees for consideration of preliminary approval. Thank you very much. Is there, there's a motion, is there a second? Second. Second. Okay, we've got a second, Vice President Caudill. We already asked for public comment. Um, any further discussion from the board? All right, hearing none. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposition? Okay, the motion is carried. Let the record show it is unanimous. Thank you very much, but we see that you're not quite done yet, Miss Anderson. So we will uh, keep it going and go on to uh, agenda item 2.04. Uh, possible action to provide preliminary approval of the discussion um, and possible action to recommend revisions, uh, re revisions to and forward the proposed revision of policy 1505. This is about visitors to district property, meaningful access specifically to update language to a future regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for a consideration of preliminary approval. And uh, once again, we'll go to uh, Ms. Anderson. Almost done. Hang in there. Almost done. This one's an easy one. Again, Michelle Anderson, Chief Communications and Community Engagement Officer for the record. Uh, the changes being recommended are to just to ensure consistency in our formatting. And it's simply moving the definitions to the beginning of the policy rather than the end. No other changes. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple stuff. And we see that that was done by legal. So it is in blue, but it isn't struck out. So we see it's, it's right, there's blue on our handout right here. So, all right, any, um, any discussion, any questions for uh, Ms. Anderson as we as we discuss this, I see that uh, trustee church. Yeah, thank you. Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, not so easy because I have a number of questions and uh, obviously we have three new trustees um, who were not involved in this discussion before. So I'm gonna try and uh, exit my full screen and go to my notes that I've made. And it's a little bit difficult between what was crossed out and what was not crossed out. but. That said, let me go to the top of my page. The easy one, my law enforcement background is the definition of trespass. Um, trespass, as I understand it, and this may be for legal, uh, involves going upon or remaining upon. So in other words, somebody doesn't wear their mask and they're issued a trespass warning. They may have legally come on, uh, but now they've violated something and they've been asked to leave, they become disruptive, et cetera. So regardless of the reason, alcohol or whatever. So 
uh, that would be my first one I might ask uh, legal to weigh in on. Okay, so can we, can we pause and just take them in order as, as, they're, as they appear, Trustee Church? I think take them, pause, I think. Okay, awesome. Uh, Council, we'll ask if you will, if you wouldn't mind uh, weighing in um, on the definition of trespass, and that, um, so we can make sure we have a definition um, that falls in line with our practice. Yeah, I'm trying to, well, I, I, I didn't know this was coming, so I, I don't know the definition off the top of my head, so I'm going back to bar bar prep and it's my recollection that a trespass is the illegal entry upon the property of another is that what it says the wrongful entry upon the property of another that that's mm -hmm. my recollection i i i haven't looked at trespass long well yeah it's, i could i could move on and then we can come back to that but I, well, i'm not gonna have time to do the research right well, no, now no no no, no yeah, yeah pause let's yeah let's pause let's not let's not move on from it quite yet so it looks like um um because we're in the middle of a meeting, so he's not going to be able yeah. to look it up. Because yeah, I, I'm sorry, meeting, I, so. I should have got this uh, done sooner. I I didn't. Okay, so so that's something. So that's a, so. What would your what would your um, uh, what would your recommendation be, uh, Trustee Church? Or remains upon. It happens all the time. For example, somebody in a casino, they're fine for a while, and then they get you know alcohol infused, and uh, the security officer issues them the trespass warning or the same event at a school event, a sporting event, and they're uh, become rowdy and they're issued the trespass warning. Um, okay, so what, would, so what would your recommendation be on that language? Or remains upon. So you would, you would want after, it to say- remains upon, after, remains upon after being lawfully ordered to leave. So what would that read like? Help me out, because this, this right. is your- Wrongful change. entry in your words. or remains upon the lands of another, you have that already, because we'll move to the end, mm -hmm. after being legally ordered to leave. And I can kind of explain a little bit. Um, I, is that, I'm can sorry, we, go ahead. Can, we suggest, can I suggest instead of legally, because I think that sounds like law enforcement and we also do trespass by principals and other folks. So perhaps we do upon the lands of another after being provided notice pursuant to district policies and regulations. Cause I think that's the same thing as you're getting at notice. I think I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Okay. Okay. Let me, let's just pause for a minute. Um, to, so we can have our, uh, have our trustees weigh in on that um, that shift. Are you, are, I know you haven't had a chance to dig into that deeply, Council. Are, are you comfortable with it? Colleagues, I'll ask if you're comfortable with that suggested change as we see on the screen. But I would suggest that we do this. We cut this. Put this here. Because it's it's two different things. Yeah, two different things. Yeah, two different things. I mean, it's certainly when I would say this after. Um, um, I think it certainly makes sense that we don't want it to just be that because you entered, um, but also if you stay past when you should. I mean, that certainly seems like um, that seems like something I think reasonable that we want we want to we want to have uh, have expressed here. Because otherwise, if people stay if they enter legally or they for the quote unquote right reason, but they stay beyond their when they should, our policy doesn't doesn't um doesn't give that principal that school administrator or whatever an opportunity to ask them to leave so i i so i think you asked me if i'm comfortable with it. i'm comfortable with it written that way legally uh from my perspective and i think that's consistent with what we do okay the wrongful entry i'll, I'll read it and then i see i see your hand uh trustee calvert trustee church you can put your hand down because this is your item we're going to keep coming back to you so don't worry about that um, the wrongful entry upon the lands of another um, or wrongfully remaining upon the lands of another after being provided notice pursuant to district policies and regulations. That's the way it reads at this point. Um, I see uh, uh, Trustee Calvert, do you have a commentary on that? Yeah, so my comment would be, um, Mr. Church alluded to casinos and I'm not trying to compare casinos to school policies, but most of time there's a time frame that you are not allowed to be on that property or whatever so are we going to do that here or we're we just going to leave it as is also let me say what you're asking what you're asking then 
if someone gets trespassed yes. in the in, 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 in the in the in the uh, the casino, the gaming or hospitality environment, you work in hospitality. Um, if someone is trespassed, then not only are they kicking Angie out, but they're saying, Angie, and you can't come back for two months or whatever, right? Yes. And you're saying, is do we want that to be a part of the policy? Um, that's up and she's asking for people's uh, comments on that. Uh, Colleagues? I'm not saying uh, I want a part of the policy, but I, I know even around town, you'll see uh, trespassing. You're violated, then you're for 30 days or what have you. So I'm not saying that we need to put it in the policy, but I think that we need to, I don't know. I just. Something to consider. Something to consider. So let's look at, I see, I see um, legal with your hand up, uh, counsel. Yeah, I'm trying to find it and I can't remember if it's in this policy or not, but when we do trespass someone, they are excluded from the property for a time frame as Trustee Calvert asked. I don't remember the number. I haven't looked at this in a while, but I do remember that being part of it. Um, so okay. I'm just trying to see if it's in this policy. Maybe Michelle, if you know if it's in this policy or not, I'm trying to. I don't recollect reading that. Um, I'm going through quickly with you as well. It might be in the school police policy or in a different location. But I do know that we, they are excluded to answer Trustee Calvert's question for a certain period of time. What that time is, I can't say. And that's fine, Neil. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Then that then that would certainly go along with that. This this says they can be trespassed, and it, it probably most likely falls into um, police procedures. And it may, President Taylor and, and Chief mm -hmm. Counsel, it may also under the um, associated documents, if you see um, admin reg 1520, mm. trespass warnings and appeal process. So uh, it actually may be under there as well too. I, I, think, I think it is. I think it's a part of this policy. If you look at F violations and then little I, uh, mm. talks about that mm -hmm. and then it's under the regs and there's an appeal process and everything for okay. somebody who feels they've been improperly trespassed and you get a trust mm -hmm. this is the trespass warning that I was speaking of earlier when trustee church asked about uh, somebody who remains on so you can give them a warning mm -hmm. and you also give people a warning if they refuse to follow you know police orders or the principal or something along those lines uh but it's not just as simple as you're not doing what is asked. It's you have, you're there, uh, you know, sometimes we see it with traffic, for example, a uh, particular parent refuses to follow the flow of traffic because it's easier for him or her to drop their child off in a certain area, even though it's more dangerous. Right. So at some point they start getting notice and then just, just by way of example. Okay. Okay. I think, I think trustee Calvert is, uh, is, uh, is comfortable with that team that is there. And it covers that issue. Um, we're going to go on. Uh, so let's um, let's let's vote on this. We're going to vote on whatever we have. We'll vote on them as we go. So is there a, a motion to amend definition number two as suggested on the screen? I'd like to make that motion. Made it moved by Trustee Church. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Dr. Nicolette. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? All right, the motion's carried. Let the record show it is unanimous. Trustee Church, we can go on. The next one is the exact next one. Um, and this is one I'm not very knowledgeable on, but- uh, okay. May I interrupt yeah, real quick? Uh, yeah. JJ just texted me just so everyone, the board knows so we have a record. Apparently the reg says it can be up for to one year for uh, being excluded from the property. So okay. there you go. Sorry, Trustee. All right. Sure. And and while we're you. since you mentioned that, I, I think if somebody's been excluded and they come back, it's already covered under that ordinance, the wrongful entry. At that point, it's wrongful entry. Yeah. And mm -hmm. humorously, uh, some of the people in the casinos got 86 from so many places they couldn't remember. And that's why the some of the city attorneys opined on uh, that enforceability. So, uh, you know, I've been kicked out of better places than, than that. So. Moving on, um, number three, the electronic surveillance. Uh, I'm troubled by this, and I'd really like some guidance or consultation. If you know, cameras are so small and people just having cameras, 
much like the police carry, uh, you know, at the center of their chest to, to film things. I, I'm not aware of a, any law that prohibits the, in general, you can't be um, doing things in private or looking up, you know, we have cases where literally they look up uh, clothing or things like that, but just the electronic surveillance could, being a new trustee with three months on, could somebody weigh in on that? There's a specific uh, law counsel. that, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. But, uh, that's okay. There's Go a right specific here. law that applies to school properties that says you can't surreptitiously record on school school property. I don't remember the statute off the top of my head. I, I didn't know the question was coming. I apologize. But I know that there is one. And and it it's a good public policy, right? We don't, our children are mandated to go to school. We provide wonderful public education for them. They go to school. You shouldn't be allowed to record them while they're at school. They should be allowed to be children. And so that's the public policy behind it. So there is a specific statute on point. What it is, I, I don't recall. Thank you, Chief Counsel. Does, does that answer that question, Jesse Church? Yes, I'm going back and forth to my notes. Um, I covered later on in the in the section. I'm just asking. This is just for for opinion. Just tell us where you just tell us where you are, so we can follow you. Uh, uh, number three, would we want to say oh, still there? Uh, number three, in violation of state or federal law. And you just you just make a recommendation if that's what you like, and we'll see if well, not. again, I, I, it's a it's more discussion at this point. I think. Um, you know, again, Mr. Lombardo may want to weigh in. I, I think it's really up to whatever the, 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 the col well, our colleagues would like to do. Well, I, I would just suggest that you don't need it because all you're doing is defining what surreptitious electronic surveillance is. So, okay. yeah, that's my take. Okay. I see your point, but I don't think it's neat. Okay. And then am i good to move on i don't want to hog the whole yes, conversation sir. but this mm -hmm. is one that's no, I... okay you have questions that's okay you have questions right. go ahead um let me see i'll, I'll move forward to that one um okay. let's see i believe it's two governing principles number a um i guess my question is visits to schools and classrooms should have legitimate purpose i get many questions already when can I visit my kid's classroom? And um, is that up to the principal? Uh, should we should it be in this policy? Do we want to discuss that if I missed it somewhere else? But just basically when a parent can or can't or guardian uh, visit the uh, children's property, classroom, classroom. Do we have, uh, I'm gonna ask the superintendent uh, to, to weigh in on that. What, what generally speaking, I certainly see this. Um, we don't, um, in my opinion, we, we don't want random people showing up in classrooms. That's just the opinion of one trustee. I think that's a, that's a, that's a all kinds of issues waiting to happen. In my opinion, however, I think I do think that the question of when I think what, what trustee church is asking is when is is a parent or guardian when are they allowed to visit a, um, the child's classroom? Am I, am I correct, trustee church? What, what, what's it? Yeah. Yeah. So whether we want to address that in the policy because it's it's vague here. Oh well, yeah, and I don't. Okay, let, well, let's hear from the superintendent and see what the. It's probably in the regulations, I would imagine. But let's see. First of all, when can they? I think that's one question you have is when can they do it, and then whatever the answer to that is, should it appear here or should it be in regulation or whatever or the school manual, or whatever. Superintendent McNeil. No, oh, thank you, President Taylor. And it really has to do with, you know, with the mission of our school district and the mission of our school district is educating children. So, so long as it does not um, interrupt the educational component during the day and that the principal has been notified, remember the principal has to know whoever is on campus at all times for safety and security reasons. So, so long as the principal, um, and, and the teacher as well um, has been noticed and that it is not interrupting the educational environment, then a parent or guardian, so long as they are the legal parent and guardian, um, would be able to. So it's an overarching mission as far as what we're doing in the classroom and not interrupting instruction. That, that answer well, that trustee church? Well, I guess that gets back to the thing. Do we wanna put another sentence in there? Um, or not, are we comfortable with it? And I'm just reaching out to my fellow trustees and or staff. What would the other sentence in your opinion say? What do you, what, what do you recommend? 
let me scroll down again. I'm, I'm going back and forth from screens. Um, You're on 2A. Yes, 2A. Please. Yes, ma'am. If I may, um, it it actually, if you if you take a look at the purpose, it's it's actually pretty clear in there for the purpose. Um, so you you have you know the, the board of trustees welcome and welcomes and encourages, but then this very second sentence at the same time, the Washoe County School District seeks to avoid disruption to the educational process, protect the safety and welfare of students and staff and to protect the district's facilities and equipment. So it really speaks to, you know, what, what the business of the school is. I think I'm good with it. Yeah, I, again, th these are things I just have gone over and wanted to raise for discussion and see if the other trustees or staff had input, but I think that answers my question. I can move on if, if need be. Okay, if you're good, let's keep moving. All right, number I, the, the same, the governing section, it says limit or deny a visit particularly from a non-parent guardian to avoid disruption. I'm just curious why we put that one sentence. It doesn't does it matter. And then the second part of that is this one does concern me a little bit. So who's going to deny a visit under their interpretation of disruption? And this is where I might suggest we add, and it's actually kind of covered below, but um, who violates a... Uh, school district rule or policy or law. In other words, I'm a little uncomfortable just denying a visit because somebody thinks it's disruptive. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to where he's on 3A. We left two. We're on three now. 3A uh, little I. Yes. Um, so we'll start with your first thing. Your first thing is why your first question was, why is this here? Okay, correct. So let's just go one by one. Uh, Dr. McNeil. Well, as a previous principal, I think this is an extremely important that uh, I would want our administrators to have that um, ability. It's their school um, and they need to have that authority as far as limiting um, the visits. And that's the reason why this is in there. Okay, thank you, Dr. McNeil. I see uh, Dr. Nicolette, your hands up. Um, I'll just speak right now as a mother and a grandmother, uh, I don't think that unless a visit by a non-parent or guardian is pre-approved and that is at the purview of the, the principal or site administrator, or maybe area administrator, just depending on what the request is, it might be a collective decision. As a parent, um, I think that there's absolutely no reason to have someone come and visit who has not been invited for academic pursuits. And I, by academic, I mean uh, someone who is there to augment the curriculum, has been invited by the teacher, there's been uh, permission, uh, especially in the lower grades by parents. Other than that, I, I don't think anybody should be able to just come in because, you know, I want to watch or I want to take pictures because I'm doing a documentary. <laughs> Um, no, there needs to be, I believe, many hoops that a person should jump through under such circumstances. Thank you, Dr. McNeil. I see several other hands up. I'm going to go to uh, Vice President Caudill, and then we'll go to Ms. Anderson, and then finally, uh, Clerk Minetto. Thank you, Madam President. I'm just going to piggyback off of uh, Trustee Nicolette. Um, I believe, and Dr. McNeil can, can jump in to uh, correct me or confirm what I'm saying, but I believe in 2019, the legislature passed a, a new law about uh, fingerprinting and uh, things that districts are required for um, individuals to really be volunteers in the school. I think volunteers is as uh, far as the district should go as far as uh, having people in the building outside of invited guests, um, just because if it starts to become too much of a free-for-all, there's risk to kids. And, and that is something that we have to take um, very serious. Uh, and I do think our community has an expectation for us that we are taking reasonable steps to ensure that any individual that walks through that single point of entry into our school has a purpose to be there um, 
or else that is going to come back on, on the school district um, and that that will be an issue. So I, I do think we have to be mindful of that. I do believe that's why this policy is outlined to ensure that we're clear on who and who is not going to be allowed entry while students are uh, in the building. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Vice President Caudill. I'll go to uh, Ms. Anderson and then Clerk Mineva. Uh, President Taylor, if I may, I just wanted to make a reference to because a lot of the questions are um, in re uh, relation to what is in the uh, 1506 regulation, uh, administrative regulation, where it is outlining some specifics such as uh, the site administrator has the right and authority to limit and or deny a visit, particularly from a non parent slash guardian to avoid disruption to school operations um, during times of student assessment when such a visitation could cause a safety concern and reasonable distractive like uh, a science lab work or result in damage of school property, uh, violation of obviously board policies, background checks. So it does go into some significant details um, as to what those uh, parameters are. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. I appreciate that. That just, that goes into, yeah, certainly pulls up some from the policy, but it goes into more detail as administrative regulations will do. Certainly. Uh, Clerk Neville, and then right back to you, Trustee Church. Um, yeah, well, I'm agreeing with what everybody's saying. Um, I, we have to protect our children, and that's why we have background checks. And, and anytime anybody who is not regular steps into a classroom, it disrupts learning. And that we know that from when we go in as trustees. There's that little moment of hopefully not a long time. Um, but I, I keep going back in my mind to, you know, we, we live in a time with people with evil intent and we can't just have an open door on our schools anymore. So that's why that's in place. Thank you. Thank you, Clifton Neville. I heard part teacher and part grandma in that statement. Uh, Trustee Church. Yeah, I, I apologize. I clearly didn't uh, explain this well. I agree with what was said 100%. My only question, if you look down to I-4, it, it's so similar. And it's not that you would deny the, the attendance of somebody or, or, or allow the attendance. It's who defines disruption. I don't want a lawsuit because we treated one person differently than another. Um, and, it, and then you look at number four, and it, it spells out kind of the law and stuff. So I'm just a little confused about I-1 versus 4. Does that make sense? It's not that I want to mm. allow people to come what? on campus. It's it's the de definition of disruption. Um, the top one doesn't really address it or say in violation of law or policy. Okay, Does that I make sense? I, yeah. Let me say what let me say let me say what I think you're saying, and I think maybe address what your what your question is is really what you're saying is you're not saying everybody and their mother should be able to come in, but you're saying uh, I four or li li little Roman numeral four. Um, explains what it is, and, and little Roman numeral I does not. Um, I'm thinking because they're all a part of A, that that they're connected to each other. Um, but I, so I think I don't think they're in contradiction with each other. I think that I think they're connected because they're all a part of the same subsection A. However, um, in terms of who defines disruption, um, I, I'll ask the uh, the superintendent to weigh in on this. But and my my understanding of it is who defines disrupt, disruption is the person who is in charge of the school of the it would be very difficult for me on the outside regardless of work to say well oh, that's a disruption and that is not that principle I would imagine that that rules are the responsibilities of the site administrators and yes there's a human element in it but there's a human element in everything um and I, I know that there um you know I know there, there are expectations around that but site administrators make those decisions every single day and I, I wouldn't think it would be any different in this case, but I certainly look to Dr. McNeil uh, to shed some light in that, on that. No, I, I agree with your interpretation, Dr. Taylor. It is the site administrator's um, duty to protect um, the safety and, and security of that building. And as a district, we need to be there to, per, you know, to support them in that. So they need to have that authority uh, to make that call. Typically, they do it within, you know, consultation with their area superintendent, and if necessary, with school police. But we need to have the administrator um, have that that ability. Thank you, Dr. McNeil. Uh, Dr. Nicolai. 
I, I would concur with that. Although I do understand where trustee church is coming from. And I, at the top level, as far as approval, um, I'm going to assume and safely assume that um, these discussions happen with uh, area superintendents and their principals. And there, there is a, an across the board uh, consistency in, in how to implement this policy and the AR that goes with it. To take it a step further, um, I think what, and, and as long as we're on number three and we've done one and two, one and, one and four, now I'm gonna look at number two. I think my concern in that particular governing principles practices area is, is a question. Do we take someone who we do not know, we've approved them, we take them to a classroom and then is it incumbent upon the teacher who's also now managing the, the students to manage that adult who they may or may not even know. That concerns me even a little more. And Trustee Church, I do understand what you're saying about how to make it equitable, but I do believe that equity exists. Equality in an, is, is another, it's, there's some judgment in that. There is. Um, I would. I think I will, I'm going to defer to uh, Dr. McNeil in terms of the practice of if somebody visits the school, how do they handle that in the classroom? I think that's more site level than our level. I think our level really is to say this is what this is what we want. This is what what our expectations are. That they this is the what at our level, right? And then the how is really going to come down to how each site administrator manages that with their with their teachers and if there are unexpected visits or if there are planned visits from parents or what have you. Um, but, but, um, but, but I certainly think it's, a, it's, a, it's certainly a question of interest. How does that teacher handle it? Do they just drop somebody off or, or what? So um, Dr. McNeil, you can shed some light on that if you would. But again, I think that's, that's, uh, that's going to be at the, more at, at the site level. And then we'll go to, uh, after Dr. McNeil, then we'll go to uh, Clark Minetto. Yeah, and it really is at the site level, and it also has to do with, you know, with the school level, whether it's elementary, middle, or high school. I mean, obviously, an 800, you know, student population at an elementary school is very different than 2,500. So there's different protocols in place, um, but they all, you know, um, have to do with making sure that, again, that the administrator, um, whether it's the principal or the assistant principal, know who is on campus at all times. And so if, if it's a visitor, um, typically at the elementary level, it's been prearranged. So you may have a parent that wants to come in and, you know, help out in the classroom and that's already been prearranged. And so the, the parent comes in, signs into the log or into the visitor management system. And then uh, typically either office staff or um, the administrator um, will walk them down to the classroom. And that's a safety, that's a safety issue that mm -hmm. you need to make mm -hmm. sure that the person is escorted to that classroom. And they also have the identifying badge um, present on them, whether it's a visitor badge or a substitute badge or something such as that. But that's the reason why that's in there. Okay, I see you, I see you nodding your head, Dr. Nicolet. Thank you. And if you're done, if you wouldn't mind uh, putting your hand down, so I don't pull you back into a different conversation as we go to Clerk Minetto. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, it, it's my experience that principals are very reasonable about this. Uh, just a few times have we had somebody who really shouldn't be on campus asked to leave and they didn't come back for a while. Um, and it was for reasonable things. It wasn't just because I don't like you. <laughs> it was because there was not good stuff going on. And so I think principals are reasonable about this. Thank you. Well, thank you, Clerk Manetto. I, I would say just from, from our own experience, although, um, although of course we're trustees and we know it, it creates something different when we visit, but by and large, I have not met a principal who was not super proud of their school. Just super proud of their school and just super proud of showing off whatever it is that they're doing or what's happening in their classrooms and so on. So that your, your statement is just kind of confirmation of that, um, Clerk Minetto. With your years of experience, you've been in more classrooms than I have. Um, but yeah, I've never met a, met a principal um, otherwise. So 
Okay, we'll go to uh, Trustee Thigpen, and then we'll go back to Trustee Church if you have more comments on this, or we'll continue to move forward. Trustee Thigpen? Thank you, Madam President. And I think uh, for me, I'm, I'm, as a new trustee, you know, I've been to, I think, 14 or 15 schools now. And, you know, you learn a lot during that time. And, and one thing I'm always cognizant of is I never want to disrupt, disrupt or distract what's going on in the classroom. But sometimes, you know, when the kids see like a new person or three people walk in, uh, they, they want to turn their heads and say, oh, who's this? Um, but I have always felt very comfortable in having, you know, any school I go to, even as a trustee, you know, they know in advance it's been approved. I have the principal with me. Sometimes I have one other trustee, Trustee Nicolette's been with me on some of these. And sometimes, or usually we have an area superintendent with us as well. So I, I am in agreement with what folks have shared here. I, I trust our principals and our teachers to understand what disruption looks like and to make sure it doesn't happen for our students because that's uh, ultimately who we're here to protect and make sure they get uh, you know the best education they can unmitigated by distraction or disruption. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with what we've got in place already. Thank you very much, Trustee Thigpen. We'll move on. Uh, Trustee Church, you have other, other questions or comments on board policy 1505? Just, just that I raise these for discussion, not opinion. You know, this is not my opinion. I, I think it was worthy of discussion. We had some great discussion, so I'm ready to move on. Okay, so we're done with 1505 then? Yes, ma'am. With your, your question, all right. All right, so we have- Oh, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, I have a oh. couple more questions on. We're done with that one section. Okay, just please keep going. All right, so the same section, let me try to find it. Um, I've I made notes and I highlighted them in red on mine. Okay, so now let's go down. If we could, I think, cover um, it's with the next section, number I, double I and triple I. Is it three? Let's see. The double I. Page four. Page four. Okay. Double I, triple I, provide a driver's license and other governmental ID. And then the triple I is where a badge are provided. And. Oh, under I, B. Under B at the top. Under, under B. B. Thank you. I've got so many notes here. It's all right. Go um, ahead. Uh, number one, I just, for discussion, a lot of discussion in the community in general, not the school district, about people having to have ID that it disenfranchises others. Just for discussion, um, if we're comfortable with that. And then minor thing on triple I, wear an ID or badge, blah, 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 private, if appropriate or if provided, because what if we have a group of uh, 30 people, are they all gonna get ID? Or are we just gonna escort them without an ID card? You know, so that's, very technical, but a minor thing. So that's all for discussion. So double I, we'll just go one at a time. What, what was the discussion on double I? About the ID, whether um, everybody's comfortable that you do have to present picture ID, government ID, or whether it's Okay. 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 Um, any, any, are, are you saying you aren't comfortable or you just want to just throw it out there? I want to throw it out there. Just, you know, it, it, since I don't want it to come back and haunt us that we didn't look at it. Um, if it, you know, I assume legals weighed in on it, but uh, it just, it, it stuck out at me. Okay, no, no particular reason, it just. Well, well. You, you, you're muted, you're muted, okay. Yeah, clearly reasons because um, it has been discussed with voter ID or elsewhere, um, the fact that somebody doesn't have ID, could they be excluded? Um, you know, do we want to make an exception or with um, appropriate staff permission, they could come on um, if, without ID. They forgot their ID and drove all the way okay. over there. So, so the just general. Okay. I get it. So just general. Okay. All right. We have we have three hands up. So we'll go in order. Dr. Nicolette, uh, Trustee Calvert, and then uh, Clerk Manetto. Thank you, Thank Trustee you. I'll just give some quick history. Um, while I served on the Safe and Healthy Schools Commission, boy, we did, we took a deep dive on this subject. Ser seriously, it took, it was about a year's worth of deep dive conversation. And we had presentations from the community, from our Washoe County Police. Um, oh goodness, many entities. And the discussion around the table, I will tell you, was not unlike the discussions we have, very heartfelt. and. 
offered some, you know, worry. I know in particular one of the the questions that came up was in our in our minority population, especially those visitors. Um, are they going to have photo ID? And we had a lot of discussion about that because we worried about Aunt Diane, who comes from a different country, to visit, and she, you know, doesn't she doesn't quite have a driver's license, but she has a she has a what do you call it a passport. So ultimately, we ended up with, you know, if you cannot prove who you are and you have a face that goes with that um, issued ID, it might be a government from another country. Um, then you know we're not going to allow you to be on the school premises, and, and that's all there was. We even had a discussion about if Diane is accompanying, you know, her daughter who lives here, what does that look like? And we, we struggled with that, and what we finally decided was it's up to the principals and the leadership administration for Washoe County to ultimately imp implement it, but if there's activities, um, you know, lots of times you don't show your IDs at activities. So we left it up to the heart of the principals to be able to manage visitors with some very strict guidelines. And, and the reason I like how this is written is because we cannot cover it all. And, and, and the Safe and Healthy Schools Commission did agree that there are times when the building principal is the person best equipped to make the decision. And, and so that's where we ended up because there was not a there was not a 100% assurance even amongst the commission. I appreciate that, Dr. Dr. Nicolette. It's good to hear that uh, the Safe and Healthy Schools Commission has had an opportunity to be involved in this as well. We rely so much on that, that one great group of volunteers. Okay, Trustee Calvert and then Clerk Manetto. Yes, I would just like to say that before becoming a trustee, I volunteered at a few schools in uh, the Washoe County School District, and that was something that I personally did not have a problem with showing my driver's license. And even though a lot of the staff, when I would come in and do whatever volunteer work I was doing, I was still asked to wear a badge or something to identify who I was. So I think that it's good because if you have someone who is on campus and they don't have something to say who they are, that is a red flag that there's something amiss maybe on the campus. So I personally think that it's a great idea that we do have this in policy. And I think that we should keep it the way that it is. Thank you, Trustee Calvert. Um, I, I will just concur with something Dr. Nicolette said, um, as well as uh, if, if you can't prove who you are, it's really hard to have a, to, to make an argument that we should we should let you be in the, in, 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 uh, on, the, uh, on the school campus in the classroom, uh, uh, oftentimes un, you know unabated. Um, and I know it, it certainly can present some challenges for those who may not have um, identification. Um, it's just it's just a um, a lot of bad things can happen if you cannot prove who you are. Then we don't know who you are. And so leaving it in the, in the hands of the, the campus, the school site administrators, I think. Um, is the best place to leave that. Um, and if there are some nuances that can be a part of this, then that, then that school principal is gonna know what those nuances are and can deal accordingly. Um, so I'm gonna concur with what, what my colleague, Dr. Nicolette said. Okay, Clerk Manetto and then uh, Trustee Thigpen and then back to you, Trustee Church. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and I'm just agreeing, um, every adult has an ID and they carry it with them because we are driving we are that's what we do and we wouldn't let somebody in our home that we didn't know we shouldn't let somebody in our school that we don't know thank you thank you clerk Benito. trustee big pin and then trustee church thank you madam president yeah I, I agree with my colleagues i think this is a matter of safety on behalf of our students so we of course have to know and log everyone that comes onto our campuses and, and we should continue to do that because if, you know, God forbid something happens, we need to be able to prove or show like, here's everybody that was in our building today. Right. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with this as is. Thank you, Trustee Thigpen. I think the other comment I would say just before we get back to you, Trustee Church, is when you look at, uh, Roman numeral little three, I, 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 um, understand that, that that ID badge 
can be something they get. And then oftentimes when you go to the office, you get a sticker that says visitor. That is that ID badge. It's not that you go through and you have a whole, um, you know, card like we have uh, and someone, but that shows that you have, you have gone by the office, they have checked your identification, and now you have something that demonstrates that you're clear. So that's what that small Roman numeral III um, um, indicates. That's what it, that's what it represents. Um, and that's what the whole visitor uh, management, the visitor registry, the whole, the whole uh, system is about. So. Trustee Church. Thank you. Uh, I think we all agree. It's just what we agree on. I agree 100% with what President Taylor said and what um, Trustee Nicolette said. The, the devil is in it says the word shall provide driver's license, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, the, and what I think I heard you say is they must be known. There's nobody probably here watching or anything that has never left their purse on the counter or wallet at home or whatever. So I, I do think it needs one sentence, uh, which is a, consistent with what you folks, I think, what I heard you say, um, that the administration has the authority, that the, the, I think the proper term might be the um, uh, a site administrator has the authority to, um, I don't know how to phrase it, to let them on. I'll phrase it legally some other way, but uh, that's not in there. So. Um, somebody comes in, everybody knows them, they left their wallet at home, uh, you know, they have their picture as the parent or guardian in the file, and, uh, but they didn't have their ID with them and we're going to turn them and send them all the way home when they just want to drop off a lunchbox or just want to do whatever their business is. Um, you, you follow my point? Just one sentence to add that the site administrator um, has the authority to um, allow access of ver verified uh, visitors. Okay. Um, and you, so do you have a recommendation as to what that would look like? Like where you would put that? What? Uh, right after, at the end, it says non-citizens um, of non -citizens double I. Where you, uh, of double I, okay. After the word non-citizens, the site administrator shall have the authority to um, allow entry of verified visitors maybe a period or that. Um, okay, keep that in your mind. Let's hear, let's, 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 we have, have a couple of hands. Let's take those and then uh, keep, keep kind of working on that because, you know, I'll need, you to, I'll need to know what you recommend, right? Um, uh, Trustee Calvert and then Dr. Nicolette. I just want to say to that uh, Trustee Church that uh, most of these schools, when you go in, that you cannot just go in. When I worked at one of the schools, someone had to let you in. So there, you have been given some authority to be there at school in order to get a badge. And if you don't have that and you don't have ID, they're not gonna let you in the building. I don't care, it's not gonna happen. It doesn't depend on the site administrator. If you don't have the identification and you don't have what you need to go into that school, you're not getting in. Okay, thank, thank you, Trustee Calvert, Dr. Nicolette. That's been my experience uh, most recently, I'd say the last four years. Uh, I understand where you're coming from, Trustee Church. I think the only thing that worries me about adding site administrator, there are times when a site administrator may be on vacation or they may be at a training or might be with you know uh, something else. So I, I'm not opposed to adding some kind of verification, but to be honest, I'm not sure I think it's needed, but I do understand where you're coming from about that. Um, again, though, I, I'm, I have not read the administrative reg on this. I'm guessing it's, I hate to say that, right? I'm fairly certain it's in the administrative regulation as to you know who is assigned to make those decisions. Well, one thing you may, just as you say that, thank you, Dr. Nicolette, um, you see um, a, um, um, a, a, a potential uh, change. Uh, legal counsel is trying to help you out, Trustee Church, um, with um, an addition to the end of little double I. The site administrator shall have the authority to allow entry to verified visitors. Um, that sounds like something like what you were speaking to. Uh, so take a look at that and see, and I'll go to Trustee Thigpen. 
Thank you, Madam President. I think the only concern that I have is is watering things down or mudding the waters a little bit on this. I mean, I'll, I mean, I in some of my school visits, I one of them I forgot my uh, trustee ID and could have easily said, oh, you can Google me or something, but I didn't feel like that was enough. They asked me, you know, do you have your driver's license? So I showed them, here it is, this is me, um, as you know, I had backup. And I appreciated that because I think we we need to have some solid checks and balances in there. And, and I would assume that even though we have this, you know, if a principal knows a parent and they know that they're allowed to come and visit, I don't see why they wouldn't allow them to come in if they have a long-staying relationship. I don't know that it needs to be in writing. Um, I would be interested to know if there is an, an admin reg or something, but um, yeah, I just, I'm very cautious about mudding the waters on this a little bit. President Taylor. Dr. McNeil, mm -hmm. Dr. McNeil yes. So the reason why I have concerns mm -hmm. about this and I go back to exactly what uh, Trustee Nicolette said, there was a lot of debate uh, back in the safe and healthy schools and part of this is with our visitor management system. And there's a reason why that visitor management system is in place. And that's because we run background checks. And the standing that I have can change from time to time. And when we have, you know, many, many um, custody concerns or um, um, temporary um, protective orders in place, those can change. And that's what those those checks are to help us out with, um, as well as our school police and our office of general counsel, who typically has to check that. So, I would be very concerned if we if, if we change the wording on this because that's the whole reason why that system is in place. Thank you, Dr. McNeil. Counsel, I see you you've uh, turned your camera on. Yeah, I just echo what Dr. McNeil said. I do understand what trustee church is getting at and i know if i was a parent i'd be disappointed if i was sent all the way home or if my children were still in school and i was going to pick them up i am a parent uh but we see it all the time where we get parents who have lost the ability to they're no longer the custodial parent for their child and they try to go to the school to pick the child up they try to go to the school to check the child out early they try to go into the child's classroom this actually happens uh, more often than it, it happens a lot. Actually, I'm, I'm surprised. We get calls all the time from schools. What do I do? I have a parent here who says they're the legal guardian, but I have another document that says they're not. And so, or I have a parent here who says they should have the right to go into the class and they've provided me this ID, but I have another document that says they're dangerous. What do I do? So that would be, you know, uh, that would be my concern um, with this. And so the, the just, and I guess that's not the exact example because I said the person has an ID, but let's say this person's known to me to be the mom, but, you know, I, I also know that they've lost, uh, or what if they've lost custody and I don't know that part. That's what I'm trying to get at, sorry. But we do get this all the time. Mm -hmm. Jesse Church comments on that? The logic is just lost on me on that because those people have government ID. They've met the entire uh, obligations of that section and they're still not authorized to come on the campus. So the section that I would add doesn't change that in any way, shape or form, but I'm not seeing um, uh, a lot of uh, backing on that. So I'm prepared to withdraw it and move on. Uh, I disagree, but I'm not going to uh, vote no on the policy over over that. Um, so yeah, enough said. Okay. No, so I'll just ask my just ask my colleagues. You see the um, a potential uh, way to go on the screen. Uh, you can weigh in on that if you feel like that's something you'd like to consider. Um, as you can see, as uh, legal counsel try to kind of find a little bit of the middle ground, if you will. Um, but you know, I, I certainly understand the concern that does it, does it water it down or not, but you can see a recommendation that might, might still make it plain that the site administrator um, should have the, uh, may have the authority to make a change one way or another. I, 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 myself, I'm comfortable with that change if it doesn't put us more at risk. Um, I'm, I'm certainly, I'm gonna agree that some of those really real issues um, that have been raised, um, don't necessarily, um, if those folks have an ID, we're gonna be in the same position anyway. Dr. Nicolette? You're muted, you're muted. Oh, 
Okay, thank you. Um, I, I, I agree with Trustee Thigpen um, that waters it down. The site administrator shall have authority to allow entry to verified. They've already been verified, so I don't think it's needed. But I do want to help Trustee mm -hmm. Church with something. On page seven, I know exactly what you're talking about, Trustee, because as the director of a child care center for 25 years, oh my gosh, the mm -hmm. stories that people have and the 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 things that scared and worried and and kind of sometimes bitter parents try and, and utilize can be a little frightening. But on page seven of this same policy under violations F, if a parent has, has been, um, has, a, has a protection order and, and there's protection order out on a parent, um, then they're trespassing if they're on the school grounds. So there are already laws in place that, that help mitigate that. Um, it, it does complicate it. And I, again, I totally understand where you're coming from. And uh, in the morning when I get up, it really is about the administrative regulation and about the training, the subsequent, subsequent training for administrators and teachers that helps them implement these policies. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee McGillard. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. I thank you for the comments. Um, Trustee Church, you have anything else on this policy, policy um, 1505? One final question. I appreciate it's all okay. the time that everybody's weighed in. And I'm trying to read through it, and I, I missed part of it, so it just popped into my head recently. Is this clear that it doesn't, how it applies to sporting events that are sanctioned or other events where you can't sign everybody in? I've been at many of those. Um, a school board meeting or, you know, a, a football game or a, a recital an ROTC function, obviously you can't sign everybody in. So is that clear in here? Uh, I, I never even thought that it was, I don't think it's intended to apply to things like athletics events and, and public functions like plays and, and concerts and things such as that. I'm, I would imagine that those are, are, are covered um, in, in a different manner because you're, no, no one's signing everybody into a football game. That is correct. This is not. This is not in reference to any athletics. It's more of the from the academic uh, standpoint of classroom and events. Okay. Anything else, Trustee Church? You're, you're, you're on mute. No, no, except at the beginning of the policy, it talks about activities. Uh, let me pull it up here. Um, Youth activities and events. It talks about in the very beginning of the the policy. Um, yeah, under so, purpose. So, First so you're saying it needs, it needs to be more clear. You're saying it needs to be more clear that it does not include. Um, well, again, discussion versus opinion. But you might want to look at that first sentence. Oh, I'm. Correction, I'm looking at, uh, wait, 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 back up, back up, back up. I looked at the wrong policy. Um, well, it does say events, classroom and events. I will have to defer to legal to see if there is a separate policy related to athletics since that's not underneath my purview. I'm not sure if he knows that off the top of his head. I would like to chime in Diane Nicolette here. On page two under the policy, it does say a, a B, uh, the school sponsored programs and activities at off-site locations. Wait, where, where, where is that again, Dr. Nicolette? Um, I'm on I, page two, I see B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the provisions of the policy include visits to schools and other district property facilities, as well as district and school sponsored programs and activities at offsite locations. District property includes. So I have to say that's an interesting question, Trustee Church. Because then the visitor management system doesn't really apply. Well, ad additionally, um... We, we, yeah, exactly, because it isn't, it isn't off-site. But this seems like the intention of this policy is more for uh, school visits and, and on-site um, activities, if you will. 
can, can we can can we uh, uh, council any opinion on this one? I know that um, I know it's under your area, um, Miss Anderson. But I, I know you weren't here when this was even written, and that seems like it's been there long standing. But it looks like there may be some clarity may be necessary because um, I don't think the intention is for events, um, and I don't think the intention is for uh, off site locations. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't have any. I don't have any thoughts on it, to be honest with you. I, I think um, perhaps perhaps this is better if this comes back and we look at that and uh, bring it back at the next meeting. I don't. I, I don't have well, an answer. That's well, I, yeah, no, no, yeah, no one expected that. Is it? Is it such that? that piece in, in and of itself can be clarified and we can still send it forward and we can take a look at it at the um, the first meeting of it at the board and look for how those may be uh, offset because I don't think that would upset the entire policy. I mean, unless you think it's more, more, more work on it is needed, you, yourself or my colleagues think that more work on it is needed than that. Um, I, I think it's really more just clarifying the, 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 the scope of this from a location standpoint. Um, is what we're looking at here. And President Taylor, if I may, um, mm -hmm. so part of that, as far as for athletics, that's going to be under um, NIAA as far as visitor protocols. Mm -hmm. um, there's various protocols as far as visitor management, um, mm -hmm. free protocols and such. That's under NIAA. And mm -hmm. then for offsite, um, you know, pre pandemic. Um, this would also go into play for field trips. And so there is a visitor management authority um, when we're going to the orchestra, yes. the, you know, the Philharmonic off site. Sure, um, sure, that, that sure. That principal still needs to be able to see who is um, chaperoning and such on a field trip on an off site. So it's off site like that, not necessarily off site if, if the Worcester High School football team goes to hug and their parents come to watch. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't include that. I. I. In my. In my mind, anyway. Um, I. I don't know if it needs to, to. To not be approved based upon that. I think that clarity can be provided. Um, and then when it goes to the board level, we've worked through this pretty. Pretty extensively. And then when it goes to the board level, um, that can just be, be clarified in terms of larger activities and and things like you know concerts and games and and that type of thing. You think is that is that too too substance is that too large of a change? Uh, you think, council? No, I don't. Okay. I think okay. I think. Yeah, I think it's within your discretion, and I. <clears throat> I think it would be too large of a change, perhaps, if we were at the last step in this right. process. But this is mm -hmm. the appropriate time to make that or suggest that, and we can bring it up next time. Yeah, I mean, I think it's clear what the, the question was and then what the, certainly what the intent of the policy is. And I think we just need to make it clear um, in the verbiage here as to just make, just make it real clear as to what's included. I think some great points were brought up um, in this. Uh, Dr. Nicolette, your hand is still up. I don't know if that's intentional. Nope, it's gone. <laughs> oh, it's back. I'm not sure. Or do you have a comment? Now I'm confused. It's intentional. I'm sorry. Okay. I, was, okay. I did not try to do that on purpose. But you know, I'm thinking, I think in totality, this is a very good policy. But if I look at page four, um, under B, visitor management, can it be just as simple to say? Um, or under B, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not where you are. Page four under. Yeah, un under B, visitor management. I'm sorry, I don't see a B under, is it just mine? I don't see a B under page four, uh, on page four. I don't see a B at all on page four. Page, uh, oh, I see it's on page three. It's on page two for me, visitor management. Oh, really? BD, it's on page two. So that's oh, weird. But anyway, go ahead. Four. Okay, whatever. Okay. There, there, go there ahead. You yep, that's I got you. I found you. As long as I found you, we're good. Visitor management. Can we, can we just say something remembering what uh, Superintendent McNeil said about field trips and other sanctioned activities and then visits to school because really visitor management is really about those areas. It's not about all that other stuff. It's about getting into the school where the kiddos are 
And then it's about field trips and other sanctioned activities, I guess. And I, I think it could be that easy. And then, you know, we don't have to change anything else. Just a thought. Well, I mean, I, I, I certainly hear you. I, I think that we still have the, the athletics piece um, that, that, that isn't very clear. Um, I, I, I think I'm more likely to want to send it, not send it back, but to have that clarified before it comes back forward, just so that we, we know we can work it through there. I, I, I'm absolutely with you in terms of what you just said, but it still doesn't leave exactly those who visit campus for athletics events and, and so on, which are larger. So, uh, Trustee Church? Again, I, I think we could handle it today. I think it would be under guiding principles at the very, very beginning on just add a section D uh, with a very quick comment about recognizing that, because uh, again, we're not just talking sporting events. Let's talk recitals, ROTC. Yeah, I see the whole thing. The whole thing. And uh, guiding principles. We can cover it later or now, but uh, governing practice principles uh, that the management of uh, large scale events shall be handled separately. Just That sounds good to me. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to discussion or we can handle it later. Uh, if you would like to do that, you can make that as a motion if you like. That's totally up to you. Well, I'd like to hear input from the others, but I think we could just wrap it up really quick with a quick sentence. Trustee uh, Thigpen? I think I'd need to say what the verbiage would look like in, in, in practice, have it on the page. Okay, thank you, Trustee Thigpen. Anybody else? Okay. Is there a motion on that to that effect then? That we either add something? If not, then we'll push it on and have a motion for the changes that have been made. Um, I, recognizing I that when it goes to the board, hang on, just take just the church, and then when it comes to the board, that this last consideration uh, be included in the version that comes back to the board. That's something like the mo that the motion would look like. Go ahead, Trustee Church. I'm sorry, could you tell me that again? You want to wait and put it later? Well, it sounds like there wasn't support in, in writing it right now. So it's like either, so either it's going to be a motion to write it now, although there wasn't any support for that, that like there's still some details to work through. It seems like there's more, you know what I mean? You ask for input, you got it. The input says, mm, I'd rather wait. That was all the input. So therefore I'm looking for a motion to move it forward. Um, we did make, I think one change to this, if I'm correct. Now I kind of lost track myself. Um, yeah, I think I think there was one sentence that yeah that the uh, was there one sentence that the uh, uh, school administration had a um, oh no because it was watered down so there've been no changes actually didn't we I change trespass that's it oh yeah we did that's it oh you took me back to it I I see I, I I missed you were giving me a big strong hint too chief counsel and I missed it um um yes yeah, so there there was one change so the so the the motion I'm looking for is to forward uh. Policy uh, 15, uh, 1550, um, 1505 as, 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 um, as changed um, and with the expectation that the last consideration on large events will, will be added before it comes to the board of, to, a, to a full meeting of the board of trustees. That's the kind of motion we're looking for if that's the pleasure of the board. If that's a motion, I'll second it. It's not a motion, I'm looking for one. <laughs> but you can make the motion if you like. Just say so moved, Jeff. So moved. All right, we have a motion on the floor. The motion on the floor is to forward uh, 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 policy board, uh, board, board policy 1505 has changed um, with the expectation that a consideration of large events will be included as it goes forward to uh, a regular meeting of the board of trustees. There, that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Not a second. Okay. Look, Trustee Calvert, as long as you're chiming in, I'm taking you. So seconded by Trustee Calvert. Uh, is there any further discussion? And that includes Jeannie, just pop on if there's any public comment on this issue. Okay, seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay, none, seeing none, the motion's carried. Uh, thank you for the work going through it. So this will go forward as, to, as with the change to trespass. And then we're looking for um, the consideration of large scale events to be included uh, when it comes forward to a full meeting of the Board of Trustees for preliminary approval. Okay, we're gonna keep on moving now to agenda item uh, 
I mean, I'm sorry, two, uh, yeah, 2.05, which is discussion of possible action to recommend the adoption of board policy 9300. This is reporting of fraud, waste, or abuse, uh, and to forward the policy to a future regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for consideration for a preliminary approval. And this is why we have our chief auditor, Mr. Starkey, um, before us, who was hung in there, camera on and everything the whole time. <laughs> Mr. Starkey, the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon, President Taylor, members of the board, and Superintendent McNeil. Uh, Kirk Starkey, for the record, as you may know, the Internal Audit Department administers the district's whistleblower hotline. Here is where district employees or community members uh, may report perceived instances of waste, fraud, or abuse relating to district operations anonymously, and they can do it via regular mail, telephone, or email. Uh, the hotline serves basically to improve internal controls and promotes accountability through the entire organization. And it provides a, a process for the staff and the community to voice concerns they may have. Currently, we do not have a board policy for this program. Therefore, we have crafted this proposed policy 9300, which would uh, serve to establish the guidelines for the operation of the program. Uh, overall, I believe the program is an integral component of good organizational govern governance. And we're asking the committee to recommend the adoption of the policy and to forward it to a future board meeting for their consideration of preliminary approval. And um, thanks for considering this item and I'd be happy to speak to any questions you may have on it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Starkey. Um, the fact that we've had this in, in practice but not had it in policy is really interesting. I do think it's a really important, um, it's important to, to allow the opportunity to report uh, fraud, waste and abuse. Yeah. Um, across across our um, across our district, and we know the hotline has been in place. It, it precedes me, and so it's just so I found it so interesting that we never had a policy around it. And certainly, um, that's why we review these things, right, to look for opportunities that we have to, to to make what we do stronger. Any questions for Mr. Starkey? I'm assuming that you've all had an opportunity to review this. Um, Vice President Carl. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm looking under one. D reporting. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess I'm curious as to how the six board, six other board members are informed of this information. It would be currently right now. It's a case by case basis. A lot of the cases we get, um, if they are investigated, it just depends on kind of the results, I would say, in the, in the totality of the whole, uh, the whole complaint and, and any resulting uh, like determination of merit or, or no merit to the complaint. And in this, let's say there's a case, we've had a few in the past where, um, how would you say, there was a determination of merit of the complaint and there were issues and things to be resolved. With this policy, we would be crafting the report and would go to it would go to the board, the board as a whole, um, is basically how I, how I think it should go. If, if that answers your question, maybe not. Yeah, I, I, boy, this is, I'm going back a little bit. I believe there was an issue in 2019, I don't know what the issue was, doesn't matter, where I believe that I remember being briefed on it um, by the former superintendent okay. as a board member in a one-on-one. -on -one. And so I, I, I want to be mindful of, of that. Um, I guess I, I'm here. I, I guess the point is I, I'm curious on, on why just the board president, because I do think there are, there are reasons why that's appropriate in other areas. I don't know if this is one of those. Um, and I know we don't obviously want open meeting law, but I mean, we get, uh, we get other pieces of information oh. as, as a board. So. Oh, I follow you. You're, you're basically saying instead of uh, limiting distribution of the report to, to the superintendent and, but, and the president, but to all board, all, all trustees, correct? Yeah, and if that means that it goes through the superintendent and one-on-ones, that's great. I think it puts the board president in a very uh, challenging situation to have some information like this. Um, and then not unless the expectation is the president shares it with the other board members if that's the case then fine i just don't see that listed anywhere in here that's fair um, well, Mike, let me let me chime in on this a little bit and just <clears throat> I, and i don't know if this if if our intention then would be to align them the same or not there's a 
um, and Chief Counsel, you, you may be able to help with this. If there is a complaint, excuse me, if there is a complaint, um, like we all know earlier, pre previously we've had a complaint um, against the superintendent, it was investigated and so on. That information was shared with the president um, and I shared it with the board. Um, I shared it with the board. I, um, I don't remember if, if the, and it seems like this maybe should be aligned in, in a similar fashion. I actually don't recall if the policy said I, I needed to share it with the board. Um, I actually think I just shared it with the board because I thought it was appropriate. Um, and I remember having a conversation about times when that may be, um, that may be appropriate or not. The, the thing that, that, can, that gets me concerned just a little bit is, and you said it very, uh, very carefully, uh, Mr. Starkey, is when you're dealing with a complaint that, that, that may or may not have merit, um, and then you look, and then this is not just regarding superintendent. This is this is everything that comes into, mm -hmm. this is everything that comes into the hotline, and that's kind of a lot. And so I think we really kind of that might be in our best interest to to, to manage that in some way. Um, I don't know what that is. Again, um, I think there are certainly again I chose to share that with the rest of the board, so it's not as though it's hey there's stuff. It's not like keeping things secret or anything like that. Um, I chose to share that because I thought it was appropriate. But it, when looking at this, it's like every single complaint that comes to a fraud hotline, that, now, that, that could potentially be a lot. Yeah, I think, I think, I don't know if it's every complaint. I guess where I get, where it kind of alarmed me a little bit is that we're talking about facts, analysis, findings, and recommendations. And, um, okay. When we're talking auditing that's if that's that's under the board as an entity and so um now if we're talking this year i have all the faith and the confidence that you know president taylor is going to keep us in line so i'm looking at this uh, or keep us informed i'm looking at this as titles and uh i i would i get nervous about recommendations for auditing uh, going to the superintendent, just the president, when the auditing function is a board function and gotcha. board oversight that almost takes it out of the board's hands. Cause let's say the president and superintendent decide this is bad. We're not telling anybody. To me, that's a big problem. And so um, I, I do think we have to take a look at how, how uh, DI is, is handled. Um, because I do think that could create a lot of issues um, if you get the wrong people in those two positions. Yeah, I, I would say this. I don't. I don't, I, I appreciate the, the that um, in terms of you know you're, you know I'll do the right thing and what have you. I, I agree. We we need to not make this decision based on who's in the chair, right, or who's in the superintendent's chair for for sure. Um, part of it is for, again to me is is. The way this is written, it would be every single one that comes, right? And I don't know if that's if every single thing that comes as it comes is is what we want to be doing as a board. Certainly, the auditor reports to to us, right? But reports through me to the board, um, but also reports to the superintendent. Um, I, I just don't know where to draw to draw that line. And my question is, do we want to draw that line that every single one that comes up goes to goes to the whole board? It's just, it, you know. If I may, uh, President Taylor, I, what I would recommend where the line be drawn is if you find something that's a problem and that triggers recommendations that as a district, we need to change some things because we found something. I, 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 found, I just look ahead and if that's the case and it turns out the board was never informed and it turns out the superintendent didn't have it, you could have board members saying, the superintendent that that's the superintendent's job to inform the board that's a problem and the other six board members say you know what we're going to talk about this and it creates a problem i'm not saying you know there's a complaint the complaints found is, is unfounded i throw that out I, that's fine but i'm yeah. saying it, you found something you we need to do something about this the policy is written in a way where the president superintendent can just amongst themselves decide and I, I I I don't I don't think that that's really where we want to go with this. Mm -hmm. No, I'm I'm not disagreeing. It's just where the line is, and at what point, right? Is there a real small recommendation, or is there something significant? This just needs to spell that out. I think there just needs to be somewhere, some place to land in between, 
when, ooh, the recommendation is, ooh, you know what, we should do a, a report on that. Yeah. So no, I, we, don't, we, we don't need that. So we don't need to do with that. It's just, where is that one? I'm not saying there shouldn't be because the board has a role for the board. As you remember, I shared it. So I do think it's important for the board to be informed. I mean, we have informed oversight. It's just a matter of, man, we don't want to be in the weeds for every single little thing that comes up. And where's that line? And right now, the policy doesn't really allow for that. Right? That, 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 so, there, there's a, so there's that line in there. I, I mean, I, I absolutely agree that there's certainly a place for, for the board to know what the heck is going on, especially if there's an issue. It's just we need to clarify where that is. I see some other hands, Dr. Nicolette, and then I see uh, Trustee Church. Guess I'm just wondering here. Thank you. Um, un under D number one, uh, I, uh, it says upon completion of the investigation. I think this is a question for Kirk. How often do complaints, let's say there's a hundred complaints, how many uh, percentage in, in your experience, how many of those complaints end up upon completion and would go to the superintendent with a formal report it's it's right now it's running pretty low um maybe 10 percent, probably a little lower than that we get um the i guess to trustee what i think what trustee coddle is point uh is well taken and, and uh, mm -hmm. president taylor also that you don't want to be seeing everything that is let's say can be dealt with quickly and or matters that are very uh that are considered let's say no merit and, and uh, found to be or incomplete information that stuff we do not transmit uh, via reports and, and 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 to the to the board no but the bigger ones with where matters are significant and um and that, that would result in let's say policies changing uh, procedures changing, those definitely um, mm -hmm. would, would find their way to you, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and right I think now, too um, I, I think I, I hear what everyone's saying. It, it, it's it's kind of right now. It's um, it's in the discretion of, of our office. I, I guess is that the way it is now. Um, but we do report. The audit committee gets a list of all cases that come through our office. Uh, no matter how large, no matter how minor, they get the full complete list and that's part of the uh, audit committee packet with um, all the case numbers and, and the type of matter and um, what the dispositions are. And the, and the bigger ones from that would flow to the, to the board. Um, no, I, I appreciate that. And I think some of them may not even be, you know, some for an example, even, go ahead. I'm so, on my, my fault. Some aren't even, we, we could get complaints and some aren't even um, considered, let's say, uh, cases, because even if everything listed in there was proven factually accurate, it wouldn't even be, let's say, a, a matter of, of uh, uh, waste fraud or abuse type situation. Mm -hmm. Right. And, that, and that's just, just worth, worth, worth to draw that. It's not about it all, not keeping the board informed of... Uh, of things that are that are that are that are significant, whatever that means, right? right. Um, and so on. So that's it. and then that's another piece of it. So it's just where the where the line is in there somewhere. Um, um, trustee Church, I see your hand up, sir. Thank you. Yes. Um, number one, I think the trustees. I agree with uh, Vice President Cadell. We need to know, and I believe we need to know right away, not upon completion. And we routinely get these confidential briefing, say from legal on legal matters, um, and we know to keep them confidential. So uh, I think we do need to know, and I think we need to know not upon completion, but before. And I have other comments on other areas, but I'll just address that for now. Okay. Well, it seems like there's a lot of work here. I would say, I don't know if we need to know, um, it really all depends, upon, again, I don't think the board should know about every whistleblower complaint. Because I do think some, some don't rise to the level. Um, we don't want to discourage people from submitting a complaint if they have an area of concern. Right. Um, I think we certainly want to encourage that. Um, I think there has to be some discretion in there um, where the, and the board, I mean, the president, the board, anybody, right? When I say the board, um, I, I don't think every single one that comes across, I, I think that's a little bit of an overkill 
We do in legal, that's a little different because we can be sued, but we also get it quarterly. We don't get it real time. Um, and I, I think, again, it could be, um, especially if you know, there are things that don't have merit or there are things that, that are really insignificant and so on. That seem, that's, that's a little weedy to me. Our job is the 30,000 foot level. Yeah. Um, I do think informed oversight is really important. And we certainly want to have that and, and not keep things from the board that the board should know. Um, but I, you know, I also don't. I also don't think that it's. Um, there are also personnel issues that can potentially be involved. Um, and if we report, er, if every single thing that's turned in, it could be a personal issue, which could fall into some other areas of protection. Um, so I just think we. I think we want to be mindful. I, I do think the informed oversight should happen. Um, I don't think every single thing that comes up should be shared with us, myself included, president, not for whatever, with the board, period. Um, and I think I'd like to find a place, and I don't know where that is, that, where, that, where that line might be. Um, and, I, and I ask again about the, um, um, I don't remember what the regs say about when people, when people just file a complaint, period. Not, not the whistleblower line per se, but if there's just a complaint filed against a principal or whatever, right? Those kinds of things. So. Just, just, uh, just part of the discussion. Uh, Trustee Thigpen. Thank you, Madam President. I, I agree with you and the points that you make. I think informed oversight is very crucial of the role that we have, but I also think if we are getting anything and everything that comes through, it's it's going to be like drinking from a fire hydrant, like like you like to say. And and I, what I don't want to happen is is for future trustees to be inundated with that and ignore something that could be actually really, really important that could get lost in, in the mix. So I think it's it's good for us to know what is what is vital and what is noise, essentially. Um, so hmm. I, I think I look to staff to, you know, weed some of that out if it's things that don't have any sort of standing or bearing, but to present us with, here's, here's the real issues that we need to be aware of, right? So it, it's, it's certainly a del delicate balance. Okay. Yeah, it, it is. I'm going to, um, Superintendent McNeil, I'm going to ask for your, just your, your, your thinking on this. And although you still, you have the, the, the day, the, the day to day oversight of the internal audit function, um, as well. Um, so get kind of weigh in what, what's your thinking on this? No, and I appreciate the discussion, you know, and this is a new, a new policy. Um, and mm -hmm. I think the definitions are really critically important here as far as fraud, waste and abuse. Um, you know, and that's kind of the first hurdle that Kirk or Mr. Starkey has to has to manage. Is this fraud? Is it waste? Is it abuse? Is it a combination of all three? Um, you know, and whether it's a dollar threshold, whether it's a, mm -hmm. um, you know, level of department threshold as far as, you know, it going to the to this to the next level to the president. I do understand uh, very much because I'm not I'm not speaking of Kristen McNeil and I'm not speaking of Dr. Taylor. I'm speaking of the title um, mm -hmm. that it is something that informed consent. So whether it is, you know, just as the Office of General Counsel does a quarterly report, maybe it's a quarterly report um, that that Mr. Starkey is able to share. Um, I, I, I would just suggest if you do a quarterly report, it's a public record. There's not the same confidentiality. Mm. Then, we, then we run into personnel issues, right? In terms of confidentiality for an employee that may, maybe someone filed a whistleblower complaint um, and maybe, there, maybe, there's, maybe it's not quite as meritorious, should we say, um, as it could be, or maybe it's something that could um, really really impact the, the, the reputation i mean there's there's just some delicacies that's all some delicacies i'm sorry go, go ahead dr McNeil. yeah and i wasn't yeah so it depends on the detail of what that report would have in it so i'm just going to use an example school xyz had a fraud review uh, uh, uh fraud, had a fraud report on may 1st and then the status of that there's no names or anything i'm just trying to get to a point to where you know what this would look like organizationally mm -hmm. and i i understand uh chief counsel's point obviously as far as public records just as um 
uh, a quick aside, when we present like uh, to audit committee, they get the listing of all cases, large, small, and the smallest. They get, it's just a high level um, listing, let's say, and it will keep, if, if there's a complaint, like a personnel complaint, it's, it's so vague we uh that there's no way in that report to identify um who or could be um named let's say um, mm -hmm. we try to keep that as try to find the balance between enough information so the decision makers know what's out there but at the same time to keep um private information private that's that that, that might fit that might fit what it is i see uh Trusty Church, I don't know if your hand is still up or if it's just up again. It's, it's up again, and then we'll go to uh, Vice President Collins. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and this gets down to confidentiality. I want to discuss that in detail, but uh, yeah, what a great point. We can't, if it's confidential, we couldn't even tell the audit committee. And again, we're not expecting you to say that Mary Smith made an unauthorized trip to Las Vegas using a school credit card. We're saying a report was received that an employee made an unauthorized trip and the investigation was unfounded. Right. Quarterly report, I love that idea. And mm -hmm. then some kind of a basic common sense matters that are significant would be reported to the trustees. Okay. Would you say that, say that last part, some kind of what trustee church? I, th I think I trust our staff enough to be vague and just say matters of significance would be reported to the board of trustees and again, maybe in a confidential manner, but reported to us. To the extent that it could confidentially, right? Um, okay, got you. Vice President Cobble, thank you, Trustee Church. Thank you, Madam President. So really what I was getting at, um, and I was working on some language, but it would conflict too much with the current language. So I just want to throw the main point out is hmm. that if there, if there's findings of fraud, I do mm -hmm. think the board as an entity has the right to know, oh, yeah. except if it involves a superintendent, then the board president needs to be notified individually because there's other issues there. Or if it involves an individual trustee, the board, the board president needs to be involved, needs to be notified. And if it involves the board president then the board vice president needs to be notified. Outside of all, outside of those scenarios, I do think the board should be informed if there's findings of fraud. So that eliminates, there's nothing here, then great. But if you find something, I do think we should know only because even if it's 50 small things, because as a board, we're responsible for the auditing function through you, yeah. um, Mr. Starkey. And I, I, if I'm as a trustee, if I see we have this much going on, yeah, it's small. To me, it's the broken windows. You know, we have all these little things going on. Something's going on. Are we? What, what's happening here? Because we could have a big one coming down the mountain, and we need to be maybe locking some things up. So I, that's what I'm looking for: is findings, only findings, not investigations, accusations. You found issues of fraud, waste, and abuse. Because because in the policy, it lists recommendations. And I don't know how we would get recommendations accomplished unless the whole board knows what's going on because it's eventually going to have to come to us anyway. Fair. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Other, other, other comments? Do, are we looking for um, motions around some of the, some of the discussion? Um, I mean, I've heard things like your quarterly report, um, things like uh, at, a, at a certain level, um, it comes to the board, um, um, things like, um, I, I don't think I heard anything in that. Some stuff goes to the president um, and then, then the other stuff goes to the entire board. Um, I do think there are times for that, whether I'm president or not, I do think there are times when some things is appropriate. Okay, the president gets shared this information and then the entire board um, gets it um, as well. I don't, I don't know, but there was, a, doesn't seem to be, we didn't have too many comments around that one. Uh, Trustee Church? Thank, thank you. I, I'd like to discuss confidentiality at this point because I don't think we can bifurcate the two, um, if I might. Okay. I don't think we could motion on one without if, discussing the other. If you think they're connected, sure. I, I do, and stop me if I'm wrong. Number one, um, I like the legal synopsis uh, or the correction. Are you, that are you, you, where are you looking so we can go there with you? Confidentiality. 
Where is it? I'm sorry. The entire confidentiality. Let me try and pull it up here. I see it. I think it's on page two. Yeah. It's a towards the e, bottom. E, page the two. whole E section. The yeah, entire e. e section. Okay. Okay. Um, it says complaints. Uh, this is one where I just totally 100% uh, disagree. But complaints will be kept confidential to the extent possible. Personally, I'd like to see complaints of in progress investigations will be kept confidential to the extent possible, uh, consistent um, with the need of adequate investigation. But uh, I think we need to be public as much as possible in accordance with labor contracts and law. But I think we need, you know, again, if we find waste, fraud, or abuse, I think the public needs to know. And let me give you a, a reverse order example and maybe a little humorous, but um, an allegation that trustee church took a trip to Vegas on the credit card and stayed at the Trump towers and, you know, spent lots of money. And in reality, uh, I stayed at the motel six on my own credit card. Well, I, I want the public to know that it's unfounded. I don't want the news calling up and saying, Hey, we heard a rumor and you go, no, that's confidential, confidential. We can't tell you. So uh, I think the public has a need and right to know. And at a bare minimum, I think the um, person complained of has a right to waive their rights of confidentiality at a very bare, bare minimum. But, uh, and then, you know, when you get down to E, triple I, uh, disciplinary action uh, is considered confidential and shall not be disclosed to the complainant. Why not? Or can we change that to say the fact that it was founded um, I've dealt with this a lot, you know, in, in my law enforcement career, and we have unfounded, founded, not sustained, which means you couldn't prove it one way or another, or otherwise closed, like the complainant withdraws their complaint. Uh, but uh, to just to tell everybody carte blanche on any, whether it's I, one, two, or three, uh, this is confidential, is not acceptable to me once an investigation is completed. All right, comments. Comments, I mean, I, I have some of my own, but I certainly like to hear from some of you. Uh, Trustee Calvert? Um, yes, I would like for Neil to weigh in on, please, um, confidentiality, uh, what that looks like within the school district. So with regard to, I guess I can start at the top with regard to complaints will be kept confidential to the extent possible consistent with the need to conduct an adequate investigation. As a general rule, we keep all investigations confidential to the extent possible. I mean, literally that's what we do. And we do that in order to protect the employee that's being investigated most of the time and or to protect uh, the district. Uh, you know, I think the thing that the board should be careful about when you have a hotline like this is if every single hotline complaint that comes in by every single person who just wants to go in and file one becomes public, then there's the perception of there's some reality to it, especially when you have social media and things of that nature, which is all the more reason you do your business in private and you look and you, you resolve the issue. It's not that anybody's trying to hide anything, but there's also, unfortunately, a, a, a mistrust and distrust campaigns all the time regarding issues that aren't true. And so why would you say, oh, I've got this complaint? Uh, and in fact, I won't go into details, but uh, Mr. Starkey and I met today on one and it's absurd. And, but yet we would have to somehow reveal that to the public and, and we're not going to investigate it because it's so absurd. And, and yet somehow we, we would reveal that. So um, that's the issue there. Then all reports involving an employee will be kept confidential to the extent possible in compliance with the policies of the district. Uh, you know, employees, just because you become a public employee doesn't mean your entire work history is um, gets divulged. And there, there's a clear case in Nevada on this issue and it's called Don Ray. And Don Ray talks about how the, the privacy of an employee outweighs that of the entity and the public's right to know, which leads into 
subparagraph three, we never share when somebody's disciplined based off of a complaint with the person who complains because it's none of their business. It's an employee issue and employee issues uh, should not, and discipline that involves employees shouldn't be shared. It, what it leads to is it leads to mal a discontent amongst the, the workforce because the person who complained, they complained about this other person for a reason and they expect their expectations are more likely than not unreasonable. And so what you, you, know, you, what you do is you say, we've looked into it, we've handled it, we've taken the appropriate steps, just like we would for you if you were the employee that was complained about. So we treat everyone the same. So that, that's the rules that we have always followed on confidentiality. It would be a big change to, uh, and I think you'd have a lot of upset employees uh, if you if you divulge all of these things in public and I guess and I do agree with trustee church an employee can waive a finding I guess oh, they looked into me and I waive it I don't know what that waiver would look like but you could do that but it since it's all confidential anyway it's what are you waiving why would you need to go public so that's how we've always looked at confidentiality here and in this section also, it's also to protect the person um, that's making the complaint. Let's say their name was on the complaint and it wasn't uh, it, it anonymous. And we, and it's to protect them as well. So we, would know, we wouldn't run around and say, hey, uh, person X has, has made a complaint against department Y and Z. We don't do that. And that's what this is uh, made to um, also protect against. And that's a great that's a great point and i should mention that that also protects uh potentially protects folks who are taking a whistleblower position and so that's also an important though yeah and i was just thank, going thank you to you both i'm sorry go, go ahead go well, ahead that's exactly what i was just going to point out so i'm glad that that chief Rombardo mentioned that because you know we spent a lot of time building building trust in our district especially around that whistleblower hotline um and that's you know uh, eliminating confidentiality puts a chilling effect on that. It absolutely does. And so um, I just want the, the board to, to know that. I, I, I would say, and that was your question. Thank you, uh, uh, Trustee Calvert. I would say I would, I would have a big concern um, about, about broadly broadcasting um, every whistleblower complaint um, or every complaint that would, that would come in. Um, because unfortunately, sometimes Sometimes intentionally or unintentionally, whatever the case may be, some of them have more merit than others. Some of them are more accurate than others. Sometimes we all have different perceptions and so on. Because um, here's the reality of it. If, um, if a complaint is made against someone, okay, and it's public, it's out there, and then the investigation happens and that person is found or the complaint is, is uh, unfounded or whatever the case may be, or in the case that Chief Rombardo uh, just spoke about, it's so it's so unfounded that it won't even be investigated. The fact that this is unfounded or not in, or not not meritorious enough to even be investigated is not as widely known as the fact that somebody complained against so and so, principal this person, trustee that person, whomever, teacher this person. It is that is not going to be as widely known. But what's going to be widely known is oh my goodness, I have this complaint. Oh, I just can't believe that. And that's not fair to that employee. Right. In, in, in my opinion, it's just not fair. Um, in the society and the world that we live in, it will be all over social media. Ooh, complain that this person or this, or that, or, it'll be all over everywhere before we can get out there good. But the fact that, oh, shoot, that was, that was, so, that was so false, that never, and that's just not fair. That, that's just not, that, it's, it's just not fair. Um, anyway, that's my two cents on that part of it. I see uh, Trustee Big Pain, your hand, and then Dr. Nicolette. Thank you, Madam President. I agree with, with the legal team, with Mr. Starkey, the superintendent, what you all said. I mean, we are the second largest school district. We're the biggest employer in Washoe County. And it would be absolute mayhem if we got rid of confidentiality. And, and our teachers and, and other staff would lose faith in the system if they didn't have a confidential measure by which to make complaints. And I, you know, I've heard stories from the past before uh, the, the current superintendent's administration of 
of folks who are still very afraid of making complaints. Um, so we need to have a mechanism of confidentiality in place so that we do maintain a safe and welcoming workplace for all of our employees yeah. to make the complaints without fear of retribution from the person they're making a complaint on or from fear of judgment on whatever that complaint may entail. So I think we have to maintain confidentiality um, at all costs. Uh, thank you, Trustee Bigpen. I appreciate that. Dr. Nicolette and then uh, Trustee Manetto. I concur with Trustee Thigpen. Uh, number one, I've got three, th three quickies. Confidentiality is paramount. And if we cannot ensure that, I don't even want a board policy, but that is number one. Number two, I go back to the purpose. It's one mm -hmm. sentence and I'm gonna read it for the public. The board adopts this policy to allow for the filing an investigation of complaints for fraud, waste, and abuse by the members of the board, employees, or volunteers, and for the protection of good faith complainants from retaliatory actions. To me, that, that last point, retaliatory actions, is extremely important. That's the impetus, I, I believe, for having anything like this. Other than if someone's breaking the law, it must be stopped. And number three, I think the audit committee, like Kirk says, has has a major role in this and if if the audit committee who i trust um sees fit to move something forward to the board then i personally think that should be the mechanism they have a purpose and though they're a group of experts and i trust them along with our audit department thank you thank you thank you thank you dr nicolette i believe it was uh trustee Manetto and then uh vice president Cottle. Yes, thank you. Um, if everything's out there, a couple things will happen. People will stop putting in for probably viable complaints yeah. and things will go by that shouldn't be going by. And, uh, you know, we have a, uh, we're working on retention of our teachers as it is. If we lose credibility, uh, it's hard to keep working for people who you, you can't trust. No question. Thank you. Thank you, Kirk. And Vice President Carlo, and then uh, Trustee Church, if he's back. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I know it's. I don't want us to keep going and going into a circle. What What I would recommend, and I'm happy to make a motion if if my colleague, unless colleagues want discussion on it, is is I do think um, the section I've been referencing about. Um, uh, Getting back to it, your reporting. I do think that that language needs to be looked at. I, I don't necessarily think we should try to piece it together here just to put it forward, because I do think as a new policy, it's good. It's best to get it right on the first try, and so give Mr. Starkey and the legal team a chance to put together some some language that they can think through to to bring it back to us. Because I, I do, this is a hang up for me. Um, that that the board wouldn't wouldn't get that information and that that cannot be perceived very well, uh, but I do think findings should be um, presented to all board members um, in some fashion, and I know there's legal ramifications from there, so I do think that it's important for the team to get a chance to to put some thought into it and not we just throw it together here today and then just send it forward and we just say that's yeah, good. Um, and so I, I can make that motion, uh, President Taylor, if, if you're, uh, mm -hmm. that's okay. No, so. I, th I think so. And then we'll, if we have a second, then we can have some discussion around that, around that motion. Uh, Dr. Nicolette, I'm going to ask, I think you just come in, if you can put your hand down, that'd be awesome. And then we'll open up discussion with you, uh, Trustee Church. All right, Go I'm, ahead, Vice President Cottle. Okay. So I move the board policy committee, send send back to staff board policy 9300 to look at different language in the reporting section that includes that informing all trustees and the superintendent of findings of fraud, waste and abuse and taking a look at any other relevant language that staff feels is necessary to send back to the board policy committee. 
Okay, there's a motion on the floor that this policy uh, first run, I should say, at, at board policy 9300, go back to go back to staff um, to make sure that um, the entire board is included in, in D uh, subsection I and uh, any other items that, that staff feels appropriate. Um, is there a second to the motion? Second. Ken. Okay, we have a second to the motion by Clerk Panetta. Okay, now let's have a discussion. Trustee Church. Thank you very much. Uh, it vaguely it does that does include e confidentiality, so it, that is included. But I want to make clear a couple things. It, it got twisted around a little bit. Nobody is suggesting that the name of the complainant be made public, and I don't think anybody is suggesting that the name of the employee under investigation be made public. Maybe, maybe for discussion if they were to be found in some violation. But that's why we have state law and labor contract to cover that. One thing that's not in here that I wanted to mention is they should not be confidential to the point that if we find criminal wrongdoing, that would be reported to the appropriate law enforcement authorities. And consistent with this, I like the idea of quarterly reporting. And again, whether it's public or not, we can debate, but you know, no names, just, uh, one paragraph, one sentence, uh, complaint was received of an improper trip. It was determined to be unfounded, you know, things of that nature. And I want those to be confidential because that shows we get them, shows the public how many we get, shows that we investigated. And, uh, you know, I think the disposition should be public. Your, your complaint was founded or not founded, um, you know, whether or not we disclose the discipline, but your complaint was founded or wasn't founded. And please, this is only one sentence, it's a long sentence, but allow me to read this in to, to, for everybody to hear. This is from the Attorney General's Open Meeting Law Manual, quoting a court case. And here's the quote. The people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies which serve them. The people, in delegating authority, do not give their public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know or what is not good for them to know. The people insist on remaining informed so that they may retain control over the instruments they have created, end quote. So I think I've made my position pretty clear on confidentiality. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Trustee Church. Any further discussion on the motion? Go ahead and put your hand down, Trustee Church, if, if you're done. Sir, I appreciate it. Okay, further discussion on the motion? Okay, seeing none, Jeannie, pop on if there's public comment. I don't think that there is. Okay. There's no public comment. Okay, thank you, Jeannie. Although all those in favor of the motion to send this back to staff for further work on uh, D, on D reporting, subsection I, um, and uh, to include all board members um, uh, to be notified um, if there is a... Um, if there is, let's see, yeah, just in that piece, and then that, and part of that conversation, that and other things that you heard in this conversation that would be appropriate based upon um, from, from staff. So, okay, that's the motion. There has been a second. It. We've had discussion. No public Can comment. I clarification. Levels. Clarification. I just want to make sure yep. I understand the motion. So that yep. does include any other items in the in the policy can be reviewed. Yeah, absolutely, and this it can all. Here's the thing. It's going to come back here. So as long as it comes back here, it's going to be reviewed anyway, right? So that, that was just specific to that, to D subsection I. But when the, when the policy comes back, we can discuss anything. Okay, and what we're, and what we're asking staff to do is based upon the conversation, uh, right. based upon kind of hearing the tenor of the conversation, any other areas that they think might be appropriate, like it might be quarterly reports, for example, or something like that to include. Okay, but anything is open when it comes back. Okay. All right, all those in favor, please signify so by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? All right, the motion's carried. Let the record show it is unanimous. Um, Chief General Counsel and um, Mr. Starkey, hopefully that gives you an idea. It does. Um, you you kind of have an idea of what the uh, what the board's kind of thinking yeah. around that and where the support seems to lie. You, seems to lie. you can go Thank forward you. from there. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to go on to agenda item 3100. I mean, agenda, uh, agenda item 2.06, which is policy 3100, uh, discussion of possible action to recommend revisions to and or for the proposed revisions to board policy 3100. 
This is financial services specifically to update language regarding financial services provided by the Office of Business and Financial Services to our future meeting of the Board of Trustees for consideration of preliminary approval. Um, and this we will turn over to our CFO, Mr. Mathers. Thank you, Madam President and trustees. Um, joining me this afternoon is our Assistant Controller, uh, Robert Carson. Um, so as a little bit of background, um, it has been approximately five years since this mm. policy was last updated. Um, so it's, it's due, that's for sure. Um, in addition to that, um, our office has um, made an intense effort to update our procedures and over the last year and a half. So that has led us, as our staff report indicates, to greatly revamp this particular policy. What we found was there were many procedures that um, didn't have a, a, any policy guidance, uh, really no mention of the many areas of our controller's office in policy. So we've tried to fill those gaps here by adding sections for accounts receivable, accounts payable, our P card or purchasing card program, payroll and debt management. Um, and, and there are regulations and certainly procedures for each of those areas. Um, but again, we were lacking kind of policy direction here. So you see a lot of new language um, as a result. Um, clearly in the finance area, it, 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 our topics do not lead easily to policy direction or policy language. It's pretty technical, but we've tried to do our best here to provide some guiding principles and again, policy direction in those areas. So um, Madam President, I'll, I'll go through them quickly if, if you'd like each of those new areas. Yeah, I think it'd be good just to give us a little overview. Okay. So we have added a definition section, as you can see, nothing too, too scary here in terms of technical kind of language. Um, then in uh, at the bottom of page one, um, as Neil's scrolling down, you see our investment section. We did add a reference to a NRS chapter for the governs specifically investment of bond proceeds, which is very important for us. That was lacking before. And then we wanted to be clear from a policy standpoint and talk about, you know, that the preservation of capital is the return of the principal, not the return on the principal. That's most important. Uh -huh. So we don't want to take undue risk. Uh, it's called the SLI principle in our industry, safety, then first safety, then liquidity, then yield. So that, that guides us in what we do. So we wanted to express that. And then um, page two, at the top of page two, you see some deletions, but those are just moving that language down to the bottom of the policy. Um, so ne uh, the next section in the policy governs student activity funds. We have a a very uh, thick student activity procedure manual. We have regulations on student activity funds, and this actually was part of the policy, but we've added a little bit of language here. Um, you know, just uh, you can see there in the first section, we are confirming, um, you know, the legal opinion that student activity funds are public funds, and they are subject to all of the um, NRS and requirements, regulatory or otherwise, for expenditure and use of public funds. And that's been a, you know, that's been an issue from time to time where people have misunderstood that. So now it's very, very clear. If, if I may, uh, Mr. Mather, and I know this is, this probably is, is taking a little bit of a left here is just, just, you know, just for, we have new trustees as well as those in the public. Um, can you say a little bit about athletic fees and how uh, students that cannot afford to fee? So we make sure we people understand this isn't an equity issue. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's very important, um, and I'm I'm glad you brought it up. Um, at the on page three, we have a section on waiver of fees, waiver. Mm -hmm. and and we mm -hmm. say upon receipt by the district of a reliable proof that a student and his parent or guardian are unable to pay a fee the fee or deposit is waived. Um, I kind of stumbled on this because we were drafting the, the regulation underneath and I thought this waiver of fees was a little too technical almost and not policy-like enough to mm -hmm. talk and mention equity. 
Dr. Taylor, right? So I think there needs to be some expression of the importance of equity when setting and collecting fees versus just kind of launching into a technical discussion of waiver of fees. Um, so that might be a suggested area where we would come back to you with some more general wording um, or, or we can keep this if, if you like it, um, if, if, if the board likes it. Um, but this is, it is trying to get to the point of if a family can claim a hardship or, and, and um, in terms of being able to pay athletic fees, book deposit fees, lab fees, they should not you know, be shamed. Um, there should be an exception made for that student. Our office does not look for those fees you know, we don't do a check to make sure every student paid a fee. It is up to the school to determine that level of ability to pay. Um, and, and we know with athletic fees, for instance, we don't collect fees from every student and that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we just require that the fees that are paid by those who can afford to pay are deposited with the business office. So I, well, I appreciate don't... that, Mr. Mather. I would, um, I would welcome that as one trustee. I would welcome that. It gives us an opportunity as a district to just um, make that statement here um, that students that can't pay their fee, um, you know, will still um, not, they won't be denied access to the materials that are necessary. Um, that's really important. I mean, those are, those are, those are academic issues, right? Um, yep. They won't be not denied access to those important programs that support, you know, students staying in school and um, and having opportunities to engage in schools um, and the activities and so on. Um, um, they won't be denied access to materials um, that are required so that they can they can fully participate in the academic experience. Um, so as one trustee, um, I would welcome um, in addition to that um, in that in that vein. Um, I'm, I'm certainly open to hearing from my colleagues because it doesn't take just one trustee saying something, but I'm certainly open to hear. Uh, just what your thoughts on it, it isn't excluded so it isn't mandatory um but I, I would like to see however this comes back to us at the next level i don't think we send it back to that but that a paragraph on that is, is included as appropriate um trustee Thigpen? yeah i agree with you madam president i think and we've heard this a lot that these types of fees can be a, a barrier for a lot of kids and that athletics for example is one reason that keeps kids in school um period I mean, it's something that uh, that some kids who may feel disenfranchised look forward to, and um, it helps them get them across, you know, the graduation line. So I, I'm very much in favor of this. Thank you, Trustee Big and Trustee Church. Thank you. Um, I was I was just about to Google this. I wish <laughs> Trustee Thigpen had talked a little longer, so I could have Googled it, because we lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think at least thousands of dollars in the meals that we talked about a few years ago that weren't being collected because people didn't pay. And my understanding, as it turned out, many people could have paid. They just simply said, well, if he's not paying, I'm not paying. I don't have to prove anything. I think this is a long discussion. We need to have not something to rush through quickly on how we're going to administer people that don't pay. Um, I agree. I mean, I agree with, with both of you that if they can't, they uh, we have to make accommodations, but I, I don't want to see somebody because they're poor not play football or band or whatever. So the devil is in the details, but um, I, I'm not comfortable just moving ahead carte blanche today. I think that's a whole nother discussion. Okay, thank you, Trustee Church. One thing I will submit to you is that that is already in place. So it's not as though what we do now is going to put it in place. It's just putting it in writing. That is already the, um, that's already the practice, just so you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, trust, go, go ahead, Mr. Matters. Yeah. And then trust. Uh, Madam Matters. President, if I may. So mm -hmm. that was a significant issue several years ago. We do have a separate meal policy and it um, does stress the importance of parental accountability. Um, what was happening was, um, I mean, there were upper income folks who never claimed a hardship, who did not pay for their children's meals. And there was, and we worked with the internal audit committee or the audit committee and Chairman Doyle and others on this really hard. Um, we did tighten up the meal policy um, to say, you know, if there's a hardship, that's one thing. 
But if you're not claiming a hardship and you're not paying, um, there will be consequences, not to the child, but to the parent, including possible referral to a debt collections agency. Um, so that was something we did spend a great deal of time on. And I know the board wrestled with that mightily, but it is in policy now. Um, we have a debt, we have a contract with a debt collections agency. Fortunately, the arrearage that had accumulated was paid off with donations. Um, so we didn't have to actually write off any bad debt, but it, it's an important concept. I would agree with, with trustee church, but we've, we do have it in policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matters. Um, again, that, that's that. So it's already a practice. It just doesn't show up here. Um, but that's good to know. So I'm glad you asked about that, Trustee Church. That might answer your question. Trustee Calvert? Um, I just wanted to get clarity um, on what we're talking about with the waiver fees. And that is more of an equity issue than anything else. And I totally would support that if there was something that we could put in there stating or somehow saying that it's more about equity than the fact that the parent or whatever cannot pay. Okay. Thank you, Ceci Talbert. Um, with, I know we're going through this, to, but we've been taking um, uh, motions as we go. And so if it is the pleasure of the board to include something here that is, um, and that, is um, that, that shows that if, if people can, can show a hardship, which is a little different than what Trustee Church is talking about, people just not paying. This is people showing the hardship, which is the practice um, at, this, at the school level, then they would not be, not, be denied access to, um, to, to their materials or, or things that are necessary for schooling or even uh, to some of the activities. If that's the desire of the board, um, I see several hands up. Um, we go with Trustee uh, Big Ten. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor uh, to make a motion of that. And I think it says it right here in black and white that you know they're pr providing reliable proof. We have to do that, I, if I remember correctly, with the meals. There's the free reduced lunch program. I think we ask for financial records to show income. Um, but yes, I'm in favor of adding a line here about um, equity. I'm just trying to figure out where it would best fit. Well, I, what I would say is that Mr. Mathers made the recommendation that when we add it, we don't have to necessarily, necessarily say where or, 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 or what but that um, we would like it to be expressed um, around the waiver fees to indicate that the, the, uh, the continued commitment of the board, I think would give them the, the, um, the parameters necessary. If, if I'm correct, that was kind of your recommendation, right, Mr. Mather? Yes, ma'am. I was suggesting perhaps being a little less specific here in policy and providing just some policy guidance and, and, and talking about equity more, specific, you know, more explicitly. And then we can have a regulation underneath that, that talks about the actual procedure for a waiver of fees. Um, that, that would be my suggestion here. This just seems a little too technical for a policy, but it's a, obviously it's up to you. So uh, Mr. Go. Oh, sorry. No, no, we're saying the same thing. So you go right ahead. So Mr. Mathers, if you're saying that instead of this outlining, you have to submit proof here, that's part of an, a regulation, but here we're saying, um, you know, in maybe we'll say in alignment with the district's um, equity stance or something, um, a student and his or her parent, I don't know. I think it may fit well at the beginning somehow. I, it, could, it could, you're right. It's kind of buried on page three and it's such an important concept. If the board wanted to go on the first page, that, that would make a lot of sense too. No, I meant like in the beginning of when we're talking about waiver fees, maybe it's oh. there. Or, oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. That's, that's fine. We can do that. Okay. So really what we're talking about is adding a statement uh, with the board's commitment to equity um, and applying these fees. That's the general concept that we're discussing here. Um, so Trustee Thigpen, I'm looking to you. You, you were going to make a motion in that vein. I'm looking yes. to see if that's your desire. And then if we, once we get, if we get a second to the motion, Trustee Church, we'll come back to you when we get to the discussion. Um, so I, I do, are we comfortable uh, um, that it's existing in this waiver of fee section though? I want to make sure first. Uh, is that what you're thinking too, President Taylor? I, I, would, I would think so. I think that's the recommendation and that's where, where we're specifically okay. talking about is, is fees. Um, so let's, let me take a stab at this. Um, so just do that. 
Again, you don't, you don't have to make the statement, but just 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 make the motion that when we add it, that it's going to include an equity our equity yeah. standpoint. A, okay. Our but, commitment, a commitment to equity, because it's it's hard for seven people to write a statement. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll do that then. I I, I make the motion that um, the waiver of fees verbiage will include our commitment to equity for all students. Okay, I'll take that as a motion. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Okay, there's a second from Trustee Calvert. Okay, now discussion. Trustee Church, you had your hand up on this issue? Yeah, based on what you said earlier, uh, uh, Madam President, I, I think the policy is fine right like it is without any kind of an addition. It's very clear. And I like the fact that it uses the word may because that gives a little discretion if it becomes excessive. Uh, I just like it the way it is. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Church. Any further discussion? Jimmy, I don't see you pop on, so I don't think there's a public comment on this issue. Okay, so seeing none, all those in favor of that change of a statement um, um, uh, to include the, the district's commitment to equity um, on, it looks like new C, new, no, it looks like subsection five under three. Um, all those in favor of making that that, uh, that change can signify so by saying aye. 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 Any, any opposition? Nay. Okay, the motion carried six to one. Okay, so that, that will be added to subsection four. We can continue on now, Mr. Mather. I think we're jumping in at accounts receivable. That's right. Um, it's a little, little hard to read here, but right underneath, we start a new section on accounts receivable. We do receive, you know, revenues, at least under the Nevada plan of various sorts and kinds. And this really is, tends to be a little bit technical reading, um, but it is um, expressing for the first time a requirement here for departments and schools to make deposits in a timely manner um, and to have those deposits and receipts posted to the general ledger in a timely manner. Um, we've, we've seen some departments who who weren't aware of that. So this will help us enforce that requirement. Um, we also have various statements here regarding handling of cash um, and, and how we handle revenues that, that schools and, and other departments like transportation or curriculum instruction or what have you may receive. Okay, okay. awesome. Okay. further on that yeah let's go we, i see i see the next one keep going hmm. okay and then accounts payable our accounts payable function is the function where we pay invoices of our contractors and vendors um, and employees who are, who are sometimes are due a reimbursement for mileage for example um, so again we're expressing the kind of policy direction here to pay invoices on a timely manner um, because that's important for our vendors, right? To have, um, you know, make sure they are paid timely so that they will continue to bid on our projects. Right. Um, so again, a lot of this is very technical, goes into encumbrances, uh, which are purchase orders, essentially in contracts that may carry over across the fiscal year. Um, but again, you know, kind of guiding the operations of our accounts payable department. Um, we want to make payments also in the most cost effective manner. The more electronic the payments are, the cheaper they are in terms of banking costs. Um, and then we go into reconciliation requirements and IRS reporting requirements and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then our next section has to do with our purchasing card or P card program. And, you know, as probably most of you realize a lot of hotels or other agencies, you know, for membership or dues aren't going to accept a purchase order. So we use P cards to make payments in that regard. Um, there are, you know, it's heavily monitored and regulated. We have dollar thresholds for the cards itself. Um, they have to be reported on and reconciled on a very timely basis. And, and so this goes into that. We also get a rebate when we use our P cards. Um, so, you know, it's, there's a cost offset there as well. So again, pretty technical stuff, but we have it here for the first time, which is important because mm -hmm. P cards are heavily used in the district. Okay. 
Then the next section has to do with our payroll function. So again, on, uh, for all these areas, we have underlying regulations and underlying procedures. So this helps again, kind of provide policy direction that's then fleshed out in those procedures. Um, but uh, as all, you, all of you know, we have a payroll department. It's really, really important for our employees. Um, so, you know, again, just expressing how that function will comply with IRS requirements and other requirements and will process items in a timely manner for our employees, but at the same time kind of providing the controls that you want in a payroll function, right, which are very important. So, um, again, pretty, pretty dry, I realize. Pretty dry. It's okay. I have, I'm going to pause you right here. I see uh, Trustee Church, you have a hand up. Thank you. Uh, this applies for F uses that uh, talks about uh, avoiding fraud, but this applies to the entire thing. And a question for Mr. Mathers, would it be appropriate maybe at the bottom to have a uh, paragraph or a sentence on if an irregularity is found, it would be reported to the chief auditor and if appropriate to law enforcement, would that be appropriate in this policy? Oh. Um, our, so, the, the situation you're asking about would be an example where an employee fraudulently reports their time. So uh, anywhere in the policy, if something stood out, you've got all the procedure. So if, if you're going through this and something is irregular, what would do you want? I don't see a procedure if something is found. I see. Yeah, and in this case, we would um, and, and have, unfortunately, would address it with with our police department, with our chief of police for an investigation. They have detectives, and that has happened, um, and and then referred to the courts. Um, so, uh, if it's the board's desire, we certainly can add some language in there. If I might too, it might not be criminal. It might be an accounting thing, and we straighten it all out. But okay. But again, either way, and then you, you raised a really good question I was going to ask, is, is there a limit to what the school district police detectives would handle versus would be referred to outside agencies? No, I've never seen that. I mean, the, our police department has the powers of investigation and referral to of those cases to the courts, and they've done so. So I'm not familiar with any monetary limit on their powers there. Um, so, and, and just to, to respond to situations where there are errors or um, it, 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 it can happen where employee leaves service and there is an amount owed and we have a process for collecting that, that money back. Um, but you're right, we don't specifically address those situations and if the board desires, we certainly can in this policy. Okay, I'll, I'll set Trustee Church. Uh, yeah, I, I would feel comfortable having a policy. I don't know if you want a motion or something, but just Certainly adding can. a sentence. Um, what's, your, what's your thinking? And my thought it? would be that it would be referred back to um, staff to uh, add a section on procedures if irregularities are found in the process. Okay, so that, that needs to go in. And, um, and, the, and the, the order of a motion so that the, the board can um, ask the superintendent to direct staff to do such. This is when you make a motion. I, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I, I, I didn't catch it. I said, you want me to make a you, motion? So, so, yeah, so you, if, if it's something that you want, it is, and this is when you make a motion to that. Okay, I, I would make a motion that uh, the policy be referred back to staff to add a, a section on procedures if irregularities are found. Okay, there's a motion on the floor that um, that staff, um, I, may, may I make it friendly that not necessarily referred back to staff because this whole, that means the whole policy goes back and it doesn't get to move forward. And it may just be staff at that at, before it comes back to the board. So, so are you open to a friendly that says, not that it be referred back to staff, but just that staff Absolutely. add that. Absolutely, thank you. You want me to right. re restate it? Would you, would you just so it's clear? I'd like to make a motion that um, staff be directed to add a section discussing the procedures if irregularities are found. Okay, 
Thank you, Trustee Church. There's a motion on the floor. Um, is there a second? Second. Is there a second? Second by Dr. Nicolette. All right. Um, any discussion? Any? I, I don't see any. And, and again, Jeannie, pop on if there's some public comment on this. Um, I don't see. I usually try, I try to pause to get a chance to do that. All right. All those in favor of, of asking staff to add um, a section that will cover if there is a, if what happens if there is an irregularity. Okay. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any op any opposition? Nay. All right. The motion. Oh, nay. Okay, uh, opposition, then the motion carries six to one. Six to one. So um, if you wouldn't mind, Mr. Mather, um, as, as you're working on the other piece around equity, the opportunity to, okay? Yeah, awesome. sure Thank will. You. I think we're, what are we on, debt management now, I think? Yes, the last substantive section of the policy has to do with debt management. Um, as you all know, um, the district issues a significant amount of debt from time to time for or has for construction of new schools and other facilities. Uh, it's been doing that for decades. Um, so this new section provides some parameters or general, again, policy statements or direction. Um, primarily that has to do with the fact that debt should be um, proposed and developed in the context of our overall budget in our overall capital improvement plan, which you'll see at the board uh, next week. Um, and so we obviously want to be very careful when issuing long-term debt. Um, and so subsection E requires uh, affordability analysis in essence to make sure that we have adequate ability to pay our debt service and adequate level of cash reserves. Um, and, and to structure our debt carefully within, again, the context of the overall debt portfolio of the district. Mm -hmm. um, subsection F is important. Some agencies in the past have gotten themselves into deep financial trouble by using derivatives, um, fixed to floating swaps and other very highly technical uh, instruments. Um, this policy is forbidding the use of derivatives um, this is something that if, if we were to use derivatives, we would need a complete separate policy on it, but we are prohibiting structured securities or derivatives like swaps, options, futures, and so forth. Again, they're very highly technical um, and, and we've never used them and, and, and really don't want to use them. Um, we, in section, subsection H, again, we talk about debt service reserves. Um, our debt service reserve exceeds the statutory minimum, and we think that's appropriate. Our minimum is 25% of our debt service fund. We're close to 50% of our, or, I'm sorry, 25% of our annual debt service payments. We are close to 50%. We think that's prudent, and that again has helped us maintain a double A rating. Um, and then there are more obvious statements here in I about paying debt service on a timely manner if we. If we didn't, that would be a, a black mark for sure on the, on the district and would affect our, our, the interest rates we pay. So, and then lastly, this subsection J talks about the many strings that go along with issuing federal tax exempt debt. And there are many um, and you have to abide by them or you risk losing the tax exempt status of those bonds. And then you'd be in essence sued by those bondholders. So there, Again, a very technical, highly regulated area. And I'm really glad we now have this in, in a formal policy. Um, so if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mavis. Um, uh, over here to the, uh, to, to the board, um, any further questions? We've got some discussion and, and some questions. Um, we've already asked uh, staff to make a couple of changes regarding um, uh, the board's commitment to equity as it pertains to uh, the waiver of fees for students. Um, additionally, to uh, what happens if there are any kind of regularities um, on this. And then um, if there's nothing further, I'll look to the board for a motion to uh, those, are, those are both small adjustments um, that staff seems really comfortable with in terms of being able to make those small changes. Um, and so I'm looking for a motion to move this with those changes uh, forward to the uh, to a full to a meeting of the full board uh, for preliminary consideration. 
Uh, Trustee Thigpen. Thank you, Madam President. I move that the Board Policy Committee recommends forwarding the proposed revisions as amended of Board Policy 3100 Financial Services to a future meeting of the Board of Trustees for consideration of pre preliminary approval. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Moved move by Trustee Thigpen, seconded by Vice President Carlo. Uh, Jeannie, please pop on if there is uh, if there's any public comment before we take this vote. In the meantime, uh, uh, Trustee Church, discussion? There's no more public comment. Just one question. The term, I'm just trying to make sure we do it right. The term amended, is that an appropriate term since we didn't specifically give them direct language? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll yield to uh, Chief General Counsel. I think it's fine. I mean, we understand the intent of the motion, so. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Mm, any opposition? All right, the, uh, the motion passes, let the record show that it is unanimous. Thank you very much, Mr. Mather. Thank you for your work. I can't believe we had lost so much of the stuff we had in practice, but not in policy. Yeah. Um, no. Right? Thank you. Right? But it's, yeah. yeah, no, but it's, it's great to get it in. And this is the one, another good thing about going through each of the policies as we go to pull up those things and close those gaps where we've had it. So thank you so much, sir. And thank you, Mr. Carson. Next time, don't say so much. All right, things are all for being here. Moving on on the agenda. Jeannie, you just said there's no further public comment. So I believe that's agenda item yeah, 3.01. No, no public comment. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, we're gonna stand adjourned. Our next meeting of the board policy committee, committee is May 18th, 2021. 2021. So thank you everybody. We will uh, see.